Welcome. <clears throat> How you doing tonight? My name is Jeffrey Murdergram. This is my show called The Jeff Show. And today's video, uh, you know, I was supposed to do another video and it got postponed. So I figured I would do this. Now, I've already uploaded this video onto YouTube. People have seen the video that we are going to be going over. This is nothing new. Uh, you've already seen this. This is just uh, something that I'm trying. This is kind of an experiment. Um, on the other video, I've gotten several comments. There's uh, Some people are wish that there was a little bit more context to the video. So what I decided to do now for you now is explain the timeline as it's happening. Some people will hate that because it's me pausing and explaining or interjecting what's going on around this time, you know, in the video. If you just want to watch the the video as it happens, go to the other video. It's the the Misfits, the road, the road to Riot Fest. If you want the commentary about what's happening per interview, um, stick around here. That's what I'm doing right now. So and the and the, the the point behind this video is for people who may not be misfits nerds like the rest of the people that hang out on this channel. It's a sort of uh, an attempt to uh, sort of expand my net and try and interact and connect with ca more casual misfits fans. Maybe there are some fans that don't know the difference between Danzig and Graves, and it's not to like rag on them or to be superior or to be, you know, kind of dickish, but instead just to break things down and explain, you know, what, it, what, what is going on. Uh, so that's what I'm attempting to do right now. And I'm doing it live. I was going to do a whole edit and I said, you know what, just free ball it. That's what you do best. So that's what I'm here doing. So there's not going to be a whole preamble. This is not the evil live streaming show. This is the Jeff show. It's my other show. Um, that, you know, when I do other stuff, it's sort of like a, like a crossover episode, but I'm, I'm glad you're here and watching. If you are not subscribed, please like comment and subscribe to this channel. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch the video. I'm going to periodically pause the video as it's going on. Hopefully I can sort of do this in real time. And I'm going to briefly talk about what is happening at this or that juncture within the video. Uh, if you don't like that, do not stay. Go watch. There's so many other videos on this on this channel to watch. If that is, if this is your mama jam, or if you do want to know more, this is the place to be. Enough preamble. Let's launch directly into it. So I'm going to upload the video file right now. We're just going to go for it. Hopefully, you can hear the sound. You wait before the misfits before putting sound. Here. Hold on. Let's just start it from the beginning. And then, like I said, I'm going to periodically pause it and talk about what's going on. Let's start. Let's start right off the bat. Uh, not not stalling for time or anything. We're just going right into this thing. The misfits have broken up. Broken up. Glenn has started Sam Hain. He's doing Sam Hain with Erie, Steve, and Pete, aka Damien. Um, they're out on the road. They put out Initium. They put out Unholy Passion. They put out November Coming Fire. This is Glenn in 1985 being interviewed and being asked what happened with the misfits at a time where Glenn was a lot more open about talking about this stuff before the, the Danzig sort of, uh, uh, you know, iron curtain came down where Danzig didn't want to talk about the misfits, but he's sort of explaining things right now. How long did you wait before the misfits before putting Sam Hain together? Well, and what I did, um, the last show, like formal show I did with the misfits was the civic show with Black Flag. And I remember that show. Okay, I quit that night. I told him I'm not out of the band. Me and him had always been talking about doing a band together because they're both unhappy with both of our bands. And so I did one more show at the misfits, which was the final misfit show in Detroit because we always had a big crowd there and a lot of um, people, you know, we just we owed it to them. We did one final show on Halloween in Detroit, and also that's the night of Sam Hain, and that's when Sam Hain actually started that night. Now, super quick, just to interject, I said I was going to do this. I was going to interject. Don't be mad about that because I said I was going to do it. If you don't like it, please move on. Um, what is interesting about Glenn t explaining this right now is that the missus were supposed to do a tour in support of the German release of of earth ad aka wolf's blood 
Uh, and they were supposed to do a whole tour, which is why they needed a new drummer. You can watch that episode elsewhere on, on my channel. We go super in depth about it. So when Glenn says I had quit the band, you know, after doing the Black Flag show, I don't know how how true that that is. But you know, uh, you know, after the fact, being in Sam Hain, that that seems to be what Glenn is saying. But who knows how true that really is? Here's the Misfits last show. Drummer at, for that show was named Brain Damage. Uh, <laughs> he got drunk before the show and couldn't play properly. So after a few songs, you uh, escorted him I did off escort the him. stage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, things came to a head, and Danzig announced to the audience that it would be the band's final show. We need more drums in the monitors. We can't hear what the fuck we're doing. Just blow this one off really quick, but if you give like 25 words or less. So real quick, he talks about, he announces at the final show, this is our last show. Happy Halloween. This is our final show. Something that I've never heard Doyle or Jerry or Glenn be interviewed about. And frankly, I don't know if Todd Swallow would know. Maybe he would know. Maybe he would not know. But um, what a part of me believes that this was a very impulsive thing for Glenn to announce at the show. I don't believe that. I don't believe that. I think the show was going so poorly and it was the thing that finally, you know, cinched it for Glenn right then and there. This is going to be the final show. I'm not going to do any tours. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do any tours in Germany. I'm going to go on and do my own project and call it a day. And, um, you know, I wonder if, if Jerry had any inkling that that was going to be the final show. I wonder if Doyle had any inkling that was going to be the final show again. Excuse me. Again, we've never, there's never been any interviews with those guys where they've been specifically asked that and we've gotten a specific answer. What accounted for the demise of the misfits? Um, <laughs> oh, so many things. Uh, that's a difference in musical direction. The misfits was just becoming this like kind of comic book kiss thing. And I was never a big kiss fan. So <laughs> a little more real, a little darker, a little more violent. Lack of touring, like I, you know, this is what I want to do for the mm -hmm. rest of my life. And uh, for the other guys, it was just kind of like, you know, a hobby. They mm -hmm. work for their father, you know, and uh, the, the band wasn't making enough money for, you know, mm -hmm. for them to stop working for their father. And I, you know, thought the band was and, you know, just things like that. And not getting along together anymore either, you know. Mm -hmm. It was together too many years, you know. Yeah. Okay, that's fair enough. For us, the misfits never stop. So real quick, before we go on to Jerry, um, all of those reasons that Glenn has sort of given, I mean, they feel, uh, you know, there is no, there is no big, it's not a big mystery. I mean, it makes, I mean, that that's probably what happened. You know, I mean, that combined with having a really bad show with not being able to keep it up anymore with, with, you know, always having to replace the lineups, you know, you, 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 you can't, they can't keep a, a permanent drummer. They were having problems with guitarists or they couldn't keep a guitarist down until they put Doyle in the band, you know, one way or another. And, um, and now it was finally time to say goodbye for all the reasons and above that makes sense. Um, now, Jerry, right now, he's about to talk about how, you know, the, the, it was always his plan to bring the Misfits back. We've not mentioning the fact that they had done another band called Christ the Conqueror uh, in, in an attempt to sort of, you know, uh, jumpstart their musical careers. And when that wasn't going anywhere, they launched into a giant lawsuit with Glenn. Everybody knows about this lawsuit. This is the big lawsuit. The lawsuit started over royalties. It was a royalty lawsuit, but eventually at some point, and but once again, never to really truly determined, uh, no matter who I asked. And, you know, um, uh, at some point, Jerry only decides we're not going to be Christ the Conqueror anymore. We're going to be the misfits again. And he was going after 
the name or he was trying to settle in a way where he could have the name and the ability to write and record as the misfits and the thing that 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 glenn in order for glenn to keep his publishing for all the songs which in my opinion probably was way more valuable than than writing and touring and recording as the misfits uh he had to give that to jerry uh, under a bunch of stipulations, there are a bunch of stipulations. We'll get into that in a minute. But let's hear what Jerry had to has to say. This is some time in the '90s after they've already reformed with uh, Michael Graves and Dr. Chud in the band, and they're just you know Jerry does slews and slews and slews of interviews, and of course the history he kind of like is rewriting history a little bit, like he's sort of saying, oh, we we never really broke up. We were just trying to get to a place where we could do the band again. Uh, and that's not 100% true, I think. I don't know. But let's listen. Fair enough. For us, the Misfits never stopped. Uh, in 1983, we broke up and tried to put the band back together in 85. But we ran into legal problems, which took 13 years to solve. Were they- so he says, we tried to put it together, but it took 13 years to solve the problems. But the reality is, you know, once, uh, you know, uh, a combination of Jerry's father as well as, you know, realizing that, you know, Glenn has been making money off of these recordings and they've never seen a dime in royalties led them to a lawsuit before that they were perfectly, they seemed to be perfectly happy doing Christ the Cocker, or if they were, you know, um, upset about royalties, it was never, you know, enough of a concern that they really, you know, needed to launch into a lawsuit. You know, or at least they waited a few years to do so. Could have been a money situation. Could have been there are a lot of reasons. Again, none of us actually know. I don't know. Nobody knows. Truthfully, only those guys know. They live in. They live in uh, Vernon. We broke up and tried to put the band back together in '85, but we ran into legal problems, which took 13 years to solve. Where are they living? They live in uh, Vernon Valley. And, and what are those guys doing now? Nothing. Dad. So we were building our guitars and designing our equipment, and we didn't have a singer, so we would like work on riffs. So after about a year of this, we had all these riffs, so we started to put them together as, a, as an album. And basically, The Misfits was my name. So right there, Jerry's talking about, that. that's as close as Jerry gets to really talking about Christ the Conqueror post-1995. Pre-1995, Jerry, you know, will talk to you and talks endlessly in interviews about how he's going to be Mo the Great and yada, yada, yada. And they're doing this thing called Christ the Conqueror, spelt with a K for Christ. You know, Christ is this metal warrior, you know, and he, he was building this whole. And apparently, according to Mike Hideous, there's a comic book. I had no idea there was a Christ the Conqueror comic book. One of the many revelations in uh, the Mike Hideous interview I recently did, check out Pizza Punk. Um, but so at some point, there they decide they decide what they decide they're you know they're building the guitars they're writing riffs they're you know recording an album but it's directionless there's no direction there's no they don't have a glenn danzig to spear point the direction of where the band is going to go my song so that was the end of the mystics so and glenn here you hear glenn talking about how glenn feels the ownership of the band it was his name it was his songs when he left the Misfits, the Misfits died. And I agree with that fully, 100%. So in, in pursuit of trying to re- regain our name, we went out and hired lawyers. The first lawyer was not good for us. He was bad. And the second lawyer uh, managed to get a settlement where we received our name. Uh, we had to let go of our old song publishing and other things. But for us, money wasn't the issue. It was the issue to come back and play for the kids. Do you- so I mean that's literally that's literally what was given up. It was like it was a trade off. They they were not they you know they do receive royalties but it's in the form of I believe mechanical royalties. But that was like that was the trade off. It was like we want to go come back as the Misfits. We want to write and record as the Misfits. We'll take our songs and and we'll put out Misfits albums. Uh we just have to let go of the old stuff. Glenn Glenn wrote these songs. He created these songs. He wants to hold on to his songs. We, we we know, or at least Glenn has some inkling of how valuable the catalog is and ultimately decides that because he's now doing Danzig, which in his opinion is just the evolution of the Misfits, the Misfits evolved into Danzig. So why would he need the Danzig? Why would he need the Misfits name to continue being 
Danzig. And as you can see here, being interviewed by Ricky Rackman, um, who would constantly rib him when he'd be interviewed for the headbangers ball. Um, you know, Glenn would just get, he would get annoyed. He didn't want to talk about the misfits anymore. He only wanted to talk about Danzig. Why wouldn't he give the name to Jerry only? You know what I mean? He's off busy doing Danzig. He's broken to the top 40 with mother in 1993, 1994. You know, he's touring the world. Um, he signed, uh, to, you know, uh, what is it? Uh, uh, American records, Rick Rubin, the, the, one of the greatest, you know, rock producers out there of the nineties is, is his producer. Uh, he's kind of sitting on top of the metal world at the moment. So what is he going to use the misfits name anymore? Fine. Take the name. I'm going to keep the songs. Uh, but of course the, the, um, Danzig for years and years and years would be hounded. Um, as you're going to see in this video would be hounded. Uh, about you know um, when are the misfits going to reunite? The, it seems that you know p the 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 popularity for as popular as Danzig could get, the misfits were always right behind you know or or right ahead or you know oh you know one was casting a shadow over the other one. You couldn't talk about Danzig without talking about the misfits, and you couldn't talk about the misfits without talking about Danzig. Uh, and and it just it was always a thorn in Danzig's side. It seemed the more that that happened the more Danzig didn't want to talk about it makes sense. I see, you see that with a lot of artists. You saw that with Frank Black and the Pixies. You see that with Tim Curry and the Rocky Horror Picture Show. When you become, when the thing that you do gets a cult following and people become obsessed with it and you grow out of it, you want to put it in your past and, and move forward. And it's almost, you see what the theme with all these guys that I just listed, including Danzig, it's about standing out on your own without the thing. You know what I mean? And you're going to see that here in some of the interviews. Do you ever do any Misfits or Sam Haynes songs? No. I just put that as in the past. Is this band called the Misfits or Sam Hain? Right. No, it's called Danzig. Okay. Yeah. Why do you keep asking questions about that? You want me to just pop you? Oh, I was just curious. There's people out there that are, that are a little bit curious okay, about well, stuff was, like that. You know, here's my viewpoint on this. This is it. It's the end. You know... Both those bands, uh, there was a time when those bands were around and the magazines were around then and they should have asked the questions about those bands at that time. I don't know. It was tough back then. It was a lot yeah. of work. As the years would go on, and I love this interview, uh, this is probably around 2007. What we were just watching was 1990-something, maybe 1992. By the way, that was one of the complaints in the comments for the other video. Jeff, there are no dates. There's no context for these interviews. So that's what I'm doing right now. That's the whole point of this. This is not the Streaming Evil Live show. This is me doing a running commentary on the other video for people who are either not familiar with The Misfits, Sam Hain and Danzig, or want that in the video. Uh, and in this interview, Glenn is older. He's around, I think this is around 2007. And he's sort of, it's the beginning of the mellowing of Glenn Danzig, where he starts to become like comfortable talking about the misfits again. And he's, you know, he talks about them in a way that he never has really talked about the misfits before. And he's kind of just telling it how it is, how it was. And it's very uh, frank, and it's a very interesting interview uh, in full. It's a brief interview, but it's an interesting interview, and I'll just let that play. A lot of people, uh, you know, maybe embellish it as the years go on, or people look back on it and we're like, oh, but it was like, we didn't make any money. You drove around in a van. Um, you know, some nights you'd play for, you know, a couple thousand people, and some nights you'd play for, like, 50 people. It was, that's the way it was, you know? So it takes these bands legends to live on and then you want to ask questions about it with these other people we well, should ask them a long time ago the question um, maybe you don't want to hear again but of course uh, did you ask Glenn again yes we did yes, and? Uh, he threw us out of his hotel <laughs> we took that as a no so um, in the 90s, after the lawsuit is resolved because eventually in 1994 the lawsuit finally gets resolved after years and years and years of court battles over this stuff. And the final settlement goes something like this, and I'm paraphrasing something like this. Um, Danzig gets to keep all the publishing for the songs. He's the, so the sole writer of the songs, and he keeps the publishing of the songs uh, forevermore. Uh, Jerry 
De- uh, sorry, Jerry Doyle, Franche Coma, Mr. Jim, and Robo. And again, take that last part with a grain of salt. But those five guys earn the right to write, tour, and record as the Misfits. Jerry and Doyle, Doyle by proxy of Jerry, go to those other guys. And again, I don't know the details of this, and I could be wrong. But go to those other guys and buy out their interest in the band as a, you know, as a touring recording entity. So Mr. Jim, Franche Coma, Robo, yada, yada, yada. Those guys can no longer do that sort of thing. Only Jerry and Doyle reserve the have the sole right to write and record and tour as the Misfits in 1994. Or maybe it happens in 1995. Then in 19, I know this part happened in 1994. Um, Jerry and Doyle, along with uh, Jonathan Grimm, who's, you know, Tank, Tank, everybody knows Tank, Jonathan Grimm. They go to Dan, Danzig is in town or Danzig is playing a show somewhere. They go to his hotel and, um, you know, it's decided that Doyle is going to be the guy who goes to talk to Jerry, uh, talk to Danzig, because Danzig always liked uh, Do- Danzig and Doyle always got along real good, something like that. Um, so they sent Doyle up by himself. Doyle knocked on Danzig's door. Danzig never answered. He was turned away or a bodyguard turned him away or something. And as Jerry's going to explain here, this was Jerry's attempt at trying to make peace with Glenn after everything that happened, which is kind of interesting because you think they spent, well, the, the lawsuit was about something else, but they spent all this money in court only for them just to, you know, try only for Jerry to try and reach his handout. And it was probably more political than anything else. He says it here. He says it all the time in interviews in the nineties, we owed it to our fans to try and be the misfits again with Glenn, because we knew that that's what the fans want, even though it's not what we want because we had problems with him and he turned us down. And so we went in our own sort of way. And in Jerry's mind, so it seems that you know it, it absolves him of any obligation of of doing the misfits the way the misfits is supposed to be and uh, gives him the freedom and the license to go out with a new singer uh to be the misfits and he talks about that here when we settled the the, the lawsuit that we had between Glenn and Caroline Records that our fans you know said oh you know a lot of them said you know don't deal with Glenn and a lot of them said well you know you guys should get Glenn back in the band now but did, you did have a, a deal with Jerry only correct there is some kind of deal that you guys have worked out where he can use the name legally a long time ago you know, so I'm not going to use it so you know but he has to say who's in the band and he doesn't do that anymore so so that was one of the stipulations that um, that is never really talked about, but that was a part of this, the 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 uh, settlement when when they did that, because Glenn did not want any confusion. He didn't want people to think that he was still in the band, and that Jerry, when promoting the Misfits, would have to state who specifically was in the band, and maybe he did at the beginning, but eventually that went out the window. Uh, but it seems that Glenn never made a big stink about it. Maybe he did in court, and we just don't know about it. It's kind of misleading. It's So we went down. We, we didn't want to talk to his management. We wanted to talk to him. So we tracked him down, and we went to his hotel. And uh, I got a, I got somebody in his room on the phone. And Doyle, I've seen what room number it was. Doyle went up and banged on the door. And uh, he had security ex- escort us. From the uh, from the building, so we got kicked out, and we took that as a no. So since the Misfits and Sam Hain were all on Plan Nine, which was your record label, which was your record. Now, also another part of this lawsuit was that when Caroline took over the catalog, because Caroline Caroline basically paid out the settlements for all the the back royalties to all the band members. They took hold of the masters, and you know they needed to make money off of those masters, which they did in hand over foot in uh, with um, uh, the box set and the whatever, all that jazz. Um, they needed to, uh, uh, sorry, I just lost, I, oh, no, I hit a pothole with my train of thought. Oh, part of that loss, part of that uh, lawsuit, part of the settlement was that Plan 9 Records was no more. Plan 9 gets dissolved. Caroline takes over. 
and that's where where things would would uh, continue on from that point. Which is your record label. And You're treading on thin ice, Ricky. One word, but I don't bring it up a, anymore. A hot I learned fire that lesson right in there. Germany. I learned that lesson in Germany, bringing up that word. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. I'm happy that he in, that he said no because I fulfilled my obligation to the fans by asking him. I really didn't want him back in the band because we have problems with him. How are things between you and Jerry now? Uh, so this interview um, is in 1999, and it's right around the time of, I believe, Satan's Child and the Sam Hain box that is coming out. And this is when both London May and Steve Zing come back into the picture. They're they're going out as uh, Sam Hain. Again, Sam Hain is opening for Danzig. Todd Youth is on guitar in Danzig, and he's also playing guitar for, or he's also playing guitar for Sam Hain. And um, this is some sort of press release where, once again, Glenn gets very honest. You heard his comments about talking about how he thought uh, the Misfits were kind of turning into Kiss and he didn't really care too much for Kiss. Um, and, you know, as he says here, he has not really spoken to Jerry since 1983. I haven't talked to Jerry in about 16 years. But do you appreciate, like, this kind of cult falling that you have, still have with the Misfits? Like, we got... At least in here, two big fans of you, like they have all the, the records. That's cool. Yeah, the, the music is meant to last, you know. And so the Misfits, Sam Hain, and hopefully Danzig will last. You you just um, referenced the. Uh... This interview was from 2005, uh, and it's this guy Rob with Metalworks, and this is so. So here's what happens. So now something very interesting happens. Um. I saw Pete mention in the comments, by the way, guys, I see all the comments. I'm ignoring comments, at least for now, because I'm trying to get through this video because this is not the, the evil live streaming show. This is something different. This is doing commentary on a video for whatever, in any case. Um, so Pete mentioned in the comments back in 2002, there was an almost reunion. We talked about previously why that might have been um, when Jerry... And uh, Glenn came together against Caroline, not wanting 12 Hits from Hell to be released. And that seemed to get them sort of talking again in a way, because literally a year later, they are discussing being the Misfits again and going out as the Misfits again. Both Now, Doyle at this time has left the band. The, the, the resurrected Misfits have imploded. Um, Glenn, sorry. Uh, Michael Graves, Dr. Chud leave the band, the band soldiers on, they get Robo in the band. Um, they get Des in the band. Doyle leaves the band. Um, but for a while they have this weird lineup where it's essentially the earth AD lineup without Danzig, but with Des Kadena from black flag, super weird. When you think about it, uh, they're doing shows. Doyle decides to leave for a bunch of reasons. He doesn't like that Jerry is the singer now. There's a lot going on. It's, 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 a, it's not just one thing. It's a bunch of things. Um, but even though he leaves, uh, uh, both Jerry and Doyle meet with Glenn after this 12 Hits from Hell thing. A year later, they go out to L.A., they meet with Glenn, and they talk about getting the Misfits back together. And Glenn has some stipulations. Now, I don't know if it's been written about, but I remember – I don't. I'm trying to remember where I heard this. I heard this word of mouth, not through the press. I heard this word of mouth when I was doing my interviews, and it went something like this. Glenn had three stipulations. There were three stipulations in order for them to reunite as the Misfits, and it went like this. One, Jerry had to stop touring as the Misfits for over a year. He could not do any Misfit shows, and he could not talk about uh, reuniting with Glenn. He had to he had to just lay low, completely lay low. As a matter of fact, I think those were that's one and two of the three things. Don't talk about Glenn. Don't talk about doing shows with Glenn. Don't tour as the Misfits for a whole year. And you have to get rid of Robo. Those are the three conditions. And Jerry refused to do all three. Jerry had shows, tons of shows booked. Uh, he was incensed that Glenn wanted him to stop. You know, and it's kind of amazing when you think about how Jerry is more than happy to stop now. Jerry just needs to do one show. <laughs> he just has to play one show a year, and he's making probably like, you know, three to four to five, six times. Who knows how many times the amount of money 
he was making when he was going out as the misfits, you know, um, in, in last, in the last decade. Um, but he, he told Glenn, you know, oh, forget it, forget it. It's not going to happen. Doyle goes off and starts doing gorgeous Frankenstein. Um, Glenn's father passes away. Gorgeous George says, hey, Doyle, uh, go to Glenn. You should go to Glenn's funeral and pay your respects and talk to Glenn, something like that. Um, that happens. Glenn and Doyle start talking again. Um, Doyle shows Glenn his gorgeous Frankenstein demo and right on the spot, because all it was, was a demo it was not supposed to be anything more than a demo. Glenn says, I want to put this out on evil live. Let me be the producer. And I'm going to put this out on evil live records. I'm going to direct music videos and I'm going to put you on my shows at the same time. Um, the, uh, the idea comes about to do a misfit set at Danzig shows. Uh, and for a very long time, and that's what, this is 2005, so this is when this has first started. And at that time, I can tell you, I don't want to get into this. I don't want to make a whole big thing about this right now, because, um, again, I'm trying to stay focused and on track and, and and talk straight to you guys. But at the time, this was a huge deal. This was so big. It started in 2004, and it was a big deal. The fact that Doyle, here is Danzig acknowledging his past. He is playing shows on stage with Doyle, and they are doing Misfits songs. Every Misfits fan, they're, all of our minds were blown. We heard these sets, and we were our mind, we heard the Electric Factory show. It just was, it was mind boggling. And, and, and it continued. It went on for over, I mean, gosh, it must have gone on for 10 years. They did it for 10 years. Um, and, you know, it, it reinvigorated uh, audiences. For Glenn, you know, who, you know, probably saw quite a dot, you know, he saw a, a doubt. It was a, a slow down curve from, you know, um, after losing the original lineup of Danzig, you know, and blowing out his voice and, you know, putting out uh, uh, Danzig five and Danzig six kind of not too well received. Um, and so this kind of like brought reinvigorated it. Uh, it was even put out as a bootleg called Misfits Revenge, which I thought was the perfect title for it. And you can see on the cover, it's uh, it's it's Glenn and Doyle in a battlefield and strewn on the field is Jerry and Lee. Uh, so it's called Misfits Revenge and it's the revenge. And you can tell that, you know, J because Jerry would not play ball with Glenn's stipulations in 2002, this was kind of like, you know, a big middle finger in Jerry's face by those two guys playing together and doing shows. So here's Rob asking Danzig, the question that Danzig would be asked over and over again throughout the years, will there ever be a reunion? Uh, Doyle's participation in doing the 30-minute the set of Misfits material, how did that happen? And did you have to, did you go full wholeheartedly into that? Or did you have to be persuaded to do that? Because, you know, I know that you're, you're, you're always a visionary and looking ahead. Uh, I think we just started talking. And it just eventually came about. I mean, I think I asked him, you know, because he left the Misfits, uh, and I asked him if he was going to still perform or not, and he said, yeah, well, you know. I think it just eventually came about in our conversations, and eventually it happened. I mean, he's right there. You can ask him, you know. <laughs> how, how do you feel, Doyle, about um, these, these string of those. shows that you've been doing with Glenn after all these years? I mean, how does it feel to be back on the stage with him? Good. <laughs> Good. I love that. I love that so much. Are you happy that the, the the new version of the Misfits are touring and still putting out CDs? I don't really care. <laughs> you don't care either way. Yeah. And you know, if we went back dealing with Glenn, it would all be about money, and then it would be nothing. What we would have is nothing. Look, I, people say, "Oh, well, Jerry's all about the money." If I was about the money, I'd play with Glenn. And I mean, he tried and. You know, he was, I don't know, there's a lot that can be said about that, but I'm not here to comment on that. I'm merely here to say this thing, and this is true about, what I'm about to say is true about, you know, um, I, how, how, do, how do I describe this? I don't know. Okay. It, it goes like this. Two no two countries that have McDonald's in their country are ever going to attack each other. And the reason why and I think it's so true or a better, a, that's a, that's not a good way to say this. Countries that don't like each other can get along because of trade. 
what is trade? Trade equals money. So you're never going to see a war between two capitalistic societies with McDonald's in them because trade people, well, you know, you, we make money off of your products and you make money off of our products and yada, yada, yada. And everybody's making money. Money brings peace. And we've seen that time and time again, and nothing could be truer for the misfits. Uh, the fact that a certain amount of money was required for those two guys to be able to share a stage together. Unbelievable amount of money, but an amount an amount of money that has literally kept them playing together for five years. If you think about how crazy that is, the, the, that Glenn and Jerry could play together. Um, and, you know, the thing I didn't, I should have done a better intro at the beginning about this, but, you know, the thing I should have said is, there are many great, you know, almost rock and roll reunions or dream rock and roll reunions. The Beatles probably being the most famous one that that never happened. You know, like the most anticipated, uh, the most desired. Everybody wanted the Beatles to reunite. I would say second to the Beatles in all of music, in all of music. And I'm not just saying this as a Misfits fan, as a Sam Hain fan, as a Danzig fan. I'm saying this in general. There is no greater anticipated reunion, no reunion more talked about, I think, than the Misfits. Not the cro not Guns N' Roses, not even the Eagles, maybe the Beatles, the Misfits. That's how big of it, this was the, this is the biggest reunion to happen. And when I say reunion, why is it so big? Why is it so, you know, um, why is it such a heavy reunion? It's a heavy reunion because these guys hate each other so much. or These guys don't get along so much. So we thought it was never, ever, ever going to happen and just took the right amount of money for it to happen. And what makes the Beatles almost reunion so crazy is that the Beatles were offered $50 million to reunite. Think about that. Think about that. The, the Misfits reunited uh, for a million dollars, but they would split, right? The Misfits, probably the most of uh, the, mo the the highest paid punk band of all time, right? The friggin' Beatles were offered fifty million dollars in the seventies and did not reunite. <laughs> you know that would be it. I make I make ten times more than I'm making because everybody wants to see this, you know, hocus pocus thing. And I have to ask, um, and, and I hope I don't tread on muddy waters here He's but so scared i've read where glenn you've said you know this is as close that anyone is ever going to see of a misfits reunion he said that for years this was the thing that was aped by dan uh, aped by misfits fans and said by danzig for years this is the closest thing you're ever going to get to a misfits reunion and for all intents and purposes it kind of was and let me ask you. That's pretty true. I don't see that. Let, let, just let me ask. For me, yeah, that's. So you don't ever anticipate there ever being a reconciliation between you and Jerry? I'm not doing a reunion with him. Ever? <laughs> yeah, it's not happening. I'd rather uh, pump gas, you know, and hang with Glenn, uh, with uh, Uncle Des and watch the Giants. I don't know about that. I know that right now, and at least for the foreseeable future, I, I can't see it happening. And then you can ask the man right there, too. How do you feel about that, Dwayne? I think that's up to him, right? Yes, it is. You, <laughs> you can't make the sandwich without the bread. <laughs> I, it's up to you. I'll, I'll do whatever, but that's up to you. It now... You know, what's funny is, I mean, this this is literally what we're seeing right here. This happened for years, years and years and years. It probably started, it, I want to say it probably, it probably started after the Misfits reunited. I don't think that it ever, you know, what's funny, if you go back and you look at Danzig interviews, pre-reunited Misfits or resurrected Misfits, whatever you want to call them, uh, you go back to interviews probably 95 and before. I don't think interviews, and I could be very wrong, prove me wrong, I'm probably wrong. Um, I don't think interviewers ever asked Glenn Danzig if the Misfits were ever going to get back together. Uh, it, it never happened. It only started to happen. He only started to get asked these questions once the Misfits were playing shows together again. Once they were playing shows, that's all anybody ever wanted to know. Because suddenly the idea of the Misfits coming back with Glenn Danzig now that they had 
the misfits back with Jerry and Doyle. They're like, well, that's great, but we really want the misfits with Glenn Danzig and Jerry only and Doyle, yada, yada, yada. It's kind of like a marriage when you, you're married and you get, you know, with the, with the woman and everything is running good and then you have problems and you split up. doesn't mean that the times together were bad. It means that times now aren't really, you know, as good as they should be. Former Misfits members Glenn Danzig, Doyle Wolfgang von Frankenstein. I like that he said the thing about the marriage. I, I've seen that firsthand. I have witnessed bands that operate like a marriage. They're like a married couple and they hate each other's guts, but they stay together for the, for the kids. <laughs> for the kids! And Jerry only last made music together in 1983. But after a near reunion about 10 years ago fell apart, fans are still wanting to see the three share a stage again and play the older songs the way they were originally intended. So this is where Doyle, this is about 2012, 2013. This is where Doyle reveals, it, it, it came out in the press and it might've been at this time. Doyle, actually it might've been earlier, it might've been 2008 or 2009. Doyle reveals that they, were, that they almost did reunite. And that Jerry is the reason that it didn't happen. He, he said, put this in your pipe and smoke it. Um, uh, it was Jerry who threw a monkey wrench into the works. Because, you know, just, you know, despite being brothers, whatever. And again, I don't know the Kayafa family dynamic situation. I can't comment on it. But there was clearly some animosity between the two brothers. There was something going on. There was a rift between them for a bunch of reasons. Um, that had to do with the business of the misfits. And, you know, they it, so much so that, and, and what's so funny is that they were even practicing, you know, they're both practicing in Pro Edge. You know, Doyle with Gorgeous Frankenstein and later Doyle is practicing in the same space that Jerry Only's misfits are practicing in. They're both, they both share the space and do it, you know. Jerry still maintains the misfits name and carries on the tradition. However, fans are rabid for a new album from the Reunited Three. Well, that seems like a distant reality in 2013. As for the reunion, what happened? Glenn set up a meeting. Me and Jerry flew out. We met his manager and him. We had a talk. We were going to do it. The next day, we weren't going to do it. There was a rumor that um, Glenn and Doyle actually asked to have a reunion and that you said no. Uh, well, that's pretty interesting because... Uh, it, it, it was something that could never really occur. I mean, you know, the thing is, you got two different philosophies on life. So he's blaming it on two different philosophies of life. But the reality was there were stipulations and he had already booked shows. He, you know, he had contracts with promoters and he couldn't break them. It didn't it, it didn't make sense to Jerry only at that time. And so he refused to comply. And the Misfits reunion never happened. And it was probably good that it didn't happen when it did. And the reason why I say that is because I don't think they would have commanded the type of guarantees that they commanded in 2016 when they finally did reunite. Can you believe it's been five years since that happened? And uh, something that, uh, you know, could have been entertained. But, you know, there's just too much ego and too much, too much, uh, you know, corp corporation talk involved. And I mean, we're not that, you know. They both want to be the boss. So it's just like... You know what I mean? So instead of everybody just saying, okay, let's do this. I mean, our egos is not bigger than our obligation to our fans. And, you know, eventually that would prove true, but it took a lot of money for that to prove true. But I think Doyle, you know, and again, Doyle being, you know, probably more inside on the situation than anybody else knows the reality of the situation. And it's what he said. They both wanted to be the boss. Jerry, after reuniting as the misfits or bringing back the misfits and doing the misfits for, you know, upwards of three times as long as the original misfits being together had a sense of ownership of the band, all his own, you know, especially, you know, again, and, you know, obviously Glenn, you know, is Glenn and the band Danzig are absolutely, one of the reasons why the Misfits, you know, name and brand and recognition, you know, continued through the 90s in the same way that Metallica sort of, you know, helped boost things with what they did in the 80s. Um, you can't take a, you can't take away from Jerry doing the same thing. Jerry did do the same thing by being the Misfits and creating tons of brand 
confusion, as I always talk about. I mean, it was, it was, it was disaster. In a way, it's been disastrous that Jerry has done this, even though he brought the music and brought the band to a, a whole new generation of fans. He has also given birth to this eternal debate within the the fan community of this, you know, of these bands, which is this Graves versus Danzig situation, which will forever exist simply because the name The Misfits was used. It would still exist even if The Misfits name wasn't used, but it exists the way it exists because the fact that he called the band The Misfits. Because he called the band The Misfits, that made Graves the singer of the band The Misfits, which leads to fans eternally. I've been, I've been watching it for 20 years, and some people have been watching it for a lot longer. You know, who's better, Glenn Danzig or, Jerry, or, or, or Michael Graves? If you're asking me, the answer is obviously Glenn Danzig for a ton of reasons. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so yeah. You know what I mean? Why are you going to be the boss? Who gives a f You know what I mean? I find that this is the only fucking business in the world where a bunch of people can't get along to make millions of dollars. You know? What the fuck is wrong with everybody? Is it, does it suck to play music? No. I'm ready to do it right now. I'll drop what I'm fucking doing. I'll put the Doyle record right here and we'll go do it. So this, so that's from 2013. The other interview was from 2014. And this is where Doyle is now in the press and he's doing interviews constantly as Doyle. And he's getting asked the same questions. He's getting asked the same questions all the time. Uh, are, do you think there will ever be a reunion? And, and he starts answering these questions with either a, a, a variety of different answers. Uh, post 2016, it was, I can't legally talk about that for a bunch of other reasons, which I'm not going to get into in this video. But pre-2016, it was always, I'm going to talk to those two guys. I'm going to get them, you know, I'm so he talks about it here. I'm I'm so I'm working on it. I'm trying to make it happen. I want to see it happen. I'm we'll, we'll drop everything to go do it. He knew what was at stake. He even said in that video in 2014 for Loudwire, he said, uh, millions and millions of dollars, because even then he knew how much money they stood to make because that's how anticipated in the last decade that is how how anticipated or how desired or or how much or or how high in demand a misfits reunion has been or could be um and they threw out a number we want a million dollars and they got a million dollars to do it and since they've gotten more they've gotten even more money uh look i i, I I got a lot of respect for Glenn. I always thought that Glenn had a lot of talent. And I just think that, you know, Glenn, uh, I don't want to say is misguided, but uh, I think that uh, he's got a message that's not productive for the people who get it. That's kind of been blown out of proportion. Um, the satanic thing has been blown out of proportion. Um, there are lots of different things going on in the songs. Uh, the fans know. Uh, I like Glenn. I, I never really disliked Glenn as a person. Those guys? Uh Let's go talk to him. So you hear you hear Jerry sort of, you know, backtracking on what he said on previous comments. And who knows what's going on behind the scenes. I feel like at this point, maybe I should discuss, or maybe I'll wait a little bit longer, actually. But here's here's Doyle in once again in 2014, just going like, you know, I'll talk to those two guys. We, you know, we just gotta get them, you know, just gotta keep working on them to make this happen. You know, I'm, I started talking to them and uh I said, everything's got to be ironed out. As we get near the end of this interview, um, many people will stand back and, and look at Glenn and, and, and your career and, and all the things that you're doing now. And people might say, Glenn Danzig's really come full circle. Do you agree with that? I don't know what that means. <laughs> Meaning like you've done it all. I mean, what, what else? Oh, no, I haven't done it all. You haven't done no, it No, the best is yet to come. Yeah, that's for sure. I really liked when I was pulling, when I was putting this together, when I edited this video, uh, but I'll, actually it was, wow, I can't believe it's been five years since I edited this video. When I edited this video back in 2016, I thought that was so interesting how he said the best is yet to come. And, you know, I don't think I'm done. And, you know, um, one of the greatest things that 
that that Glenn has done and that Jerry has done in the Misfits, besides creating the Misfits and giving us all that music and doing everything that they did, the act of reuniting as the Misfits is just as powerful as the creation of the music itself. Seeing the two of them together on stage after all these years, watching Jerry only sing backup vocals and fill in, you know, certain backing things for Glenn and just watching these two share a stage and exchange glances is by far one of the most powerful things that they've ever done for this fandom ever. It's, it's, it's so it's, it was earth shattering and it cannot be topped. It would never be topped with a, a, a Graves Misfits reunion. It would never be topped. It wasn't, you know, it's funny, right after this, Guns N' Roses reunited, another reunion, Slash and Axel famously could never reunite. And now here they were reunited. And it was almost like, it was so overlooked compared to the Misfits reuniting. It was just like, oh, that's nice. The friggin' Misfits reunited. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, I don't know. I find that interesting. And I want to do a lot, you know? I want to keep just uh, expanding, you know? And I really think the fact that, you know, again, the impossible, allowing the impossible to happen, even if it was motivated by money, allowing the impossible to happen, in fact, was exactly what Glenn was just talking about. And what you'll find is that uh, I think that the Misfits has more ahead of it than behind it riot fest september 18th douglas park so now you know we literally jump this it, he's he's promoting he's now here's jerry and here he is promoting this is 2016 shortly before riot fest in denver um you know they're they're gonna do it they're gonna come back and again i've talked about this in other videos um but that's not what this is about we're this is this is about something different um you know, we didn't know as fans, when we heard that this was happening, we didn't know if they would even make it to the first show. We didn't know if Denver was going to happen. If Denver happened, would Chicago happen? You know, if you were a Misfits fan and you had the means, meaning like you could afford to, or you could borrow the money or whatever you had to do to get to one of those two shows, like, and didn't choose to do so, I, I you know, I can't, you're, you were a fool. You're a fool because what had happened was so extraordinary. And the fact of the matter was it was so fragile. This alliance was fragile. Who knew what was going on behind the scenes? Who knew how long it would last? It Things could have imploded after Denver. Maybe they would not have been well-received. Maybe they would have been terrible live. That was not the case. It, they were freaking incredible live. But they could have been terrible live. And everybody would have been like, wow, that was a lame duck. That was that was uh, overhyped. And it turned out to be, you know, nothing turned out to suck. Who who even wants to go to Chicago? And then the Misfits would just do the Chicago show and then never do anything again. Or, in fact, they would do the two shows and then have a big fight backstage and it wouldn't allow them to play any more shows. And we do know that there were fights. We, we all know this. We all know you, you hear the rumors that it's been spoken about in in you know in Facebook groups. I've seen it all over the place. That those guys have you know they've gone back and forth with each other over the years, but they always get back on the stage and they play the songs. Why? Because there's too much goddamn money to be made, and they can't goddamn blame them. After all those years of grinding, blood, sweat, and tears, and touring, and and just just pushing through and trying to break through and, you know, make a name for themselves. They deserve all of it and more. And for me, it came into a grand culmination with the Madison square garden show in 2019. But to step back for a minute, how did it happen? How did it happen? How did these guys reunite? Cause now here we are, we jumped to 2016 and Jerry is, explaining how the misfits are going to come back and they're going to do uh, a, a new show. They're going to do another show as the misfits, as the original misfits, which I think was, was Je uh, Glenn's insistence because he wanted to differentiate himself from Jerry's misfits and the resurrected misfits. It was a smart move to call them 
the original Misfits. They could have probably used a cooler name than the original Misfits. Um, when they 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 formed a new LLC or joint partnership, it was called the Misfits AD, and I thought that was a really cool name. And when I made this video, this is the intro of a much longer video. When I made this video, it was called Evil Lives, the Misfits AD, and it was a bootleg concert film that Uncle Glenn eventually took down. But you're watching the intro to it, and that's what we're seeing right now. So what brought the Misfits back together? Well, this is what happened. Around 2014, and it had been kind of going on, uh, throughout the last deck through the aughts and the 2010s, Glenn and Jerry were suing each other. There were various things and it, and it all stemmed back from 94 from stipulations of their 94 contract. It had to do with merchandise. They were sharing merchandise or splitting merchandise or splitting rights to the merchandise. The way it worked was Jerry could sell his merchandise and Glenn could sell his merchandise and they couldn't use each other's um, likenesses without you know, uh, the, each other's approval. So you would see all these different lines of merch. You would see the misfits Halloween shirt without Jerry only on it, or you would see the misfits Halloween shirt, like, you know, for the Halloween EP with only Jerry only on it. You know what I mean? Um, you would see just various different things like that getting pressed. And at some point, um, there, there something happened with hot topic. There was, again, you can Google this. It started in, in 2014, uh, Glenn took Jerry to court. His case was thrown out. And then Jerry only countersued Glenn Danzig over the Misfits trademark. And it went back and forth. And, uh, you know, they were just spending tons and tons of money suing each other. And that's when Reason finally, you know, uh, came through. Reason bubbled to the surface. And it was determined, why are we suing each other when instead we could be making all sorts of money. And so part of the settlement, maybe to pay for their lawyer fees, part of the settlement of these lawsuits was that they would reunite to play a couple of shows. People, you know, contracts leaked. Some people said that it was 10 shows. Some people said those weren't real contracts. I'm not here to tell, I'm not an authority on it. And I'm not here to tell you which was which. All I can say is that, um, they reached a contractual settlement where they would reunite as the misfits with Doyle and they would go out and play shows for million dollar guarantees, which have only since gone up as well as make a killing on the merch. Let's listen to what Jerry only has to say about it. Chicago, you're only doing two shows. I mean, we're hoping a tour is coming out of this, but if, if, two if, 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 shows. if they run well and we find that we are, uh hitting the potential you see the thing is with us we are a legendary act we need to live up to what people conceive us to be and the, the beauty of it is is that glenn's in great shape my brother looks like freaking hercules and uh you know I've, I've been i dropped about 20 pounds even man count noticed it you know i'm running every day uh playing basketball with my nephews uh, trying to you know get that kind of mobility going and then i rehearsed the set about three times a day we got it on cd we just got back from la and we recorded the set so i put it in we put it through the pa and we rehearsed to it so it's 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 like a one hour of cardio really and um so it's going to be it's it's going to be us at the top of our game and the thing is that i'm bringing the winnebago for her last voyages one to denver and, and then again to chicago so wow uh you know it's it's old school uh, you know i don't want to lose that old school vibe i think that if we become you know, rock stars, we're going to forget why we came. And the reason we came was to really go out there and, and dominate and not really care about the bottom line. We don't care about the money. We care about the impact. And I think we made a great impact in our career. So September 18th, Douglas Park Riot Fest headline. No one thought it would happen. The reunion I was there. of the Misfits. It's going to be that was my show. That was the Jerry show I went to. and Doyle. We thought it would never happen. It's happening. So this right here was the title of the bootleg concert film that I had made in 2016. Instead of saying, you know, Evil Live 3, it was called Evil Lives the Misfits AD. And what I did was I took 144 cell phone videos after this show, the Denver show. I saw all the videos and I was, I, it, I was suddenly dawned on me. I had an epiphany. I said, you know, these would all cut together. I just need to sync them up. And that's what I did. I 
I ripped all these videos from YouTube, 144 of them, and I sunk them up. I put this, what we just watched, I put that at the beginning. It was 90 minutes long, and I called it Evil Lives, The Misfits AD. This is, this is what I said here in the show notes. Show notes, the concert itself was sourced from various cell phones and DSLRs that were in the crowd that night. Soundboard audio never surfaced, uh, nor decent audience recording. I did the best I could with the elements available to bring you as much of the feature length, uh, as much of a feature length 720p HD picture as possible. The quality of both the audio and video varies throughout the playtime. I did the best I could with the materials I had at my disposal. And to hear, I wrote, and this was so true, I swear to God, this is why I did this. Dedicated to all the fiends who cannot make it out to these shows, this labor of love is for you, Jeff Frummis. And this is when I first, you know, publicly said, again, this was 2016, September 2016. This is when I publicly put on the internet for the first time since 2010 that I was trying to make a, mis uh, a, a documentary about the Misfits. And it was only this year, and it was it, it was a year, three days ago, that I started really, really, really t uh, taking uh, broadcasting live seriously. And I have been live streaming for the last year for you guys. And uh, yes, so this is our, I guess this is kind of like the year, year anniversary celebration, which actually kind of started with the beginning of this video. And that's what this is right now. And, um, and that's the end of the video, actually. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through the comments real quick. Again, this is not our typical type of show. This is not so much of a discussion as it is, uh, you know, uh, sort of trying to do a breakdown commentary live. It probably would have been better to do this streaming. Is there going to be a new Misfits record? I don't know. I hope that there is. Hopefully a new box of the video. That would be great. Why the hell not? Hopefully it happens before the nukes start flying. Uh, too bad did not, uh, Glenn did not want to play with them at the time. Uh, I'm not going to make it through all these comments. I know some of the boys from Negative Approach have some high-quality video. Hopefully they worked out a deal. I know. Wouldn't that be great? I would love to see that one. What's going on? I'm glad you love the Misfits. See, I think we got some people in here who have not been here before, and that was the point of doing this video like this. You know what I'm saying? Uh, attention commenters, this is time like to join you. <laughs> Joe, Joe, we're gonna do a guys, we're gonna do a devil lock pageant. I've decided, uh, I'm we're gonna do a devil lock pageant. I'm gonna figure out the rules and I'm gonna force Joe Vasta, Joe from JV from Mr. Monster is gonna help me. To, he's gonna be the judge, he's gonna be one of the panelists, the judge panelists. I'll get a couple of them and we're gonna do a, a, a pageant. And the winner is going to get the bragging rights and a, and a beautiful certificate that I will send to them in the mail. Um, yeah, this is just all stuff. The only other band reunion that would have had the same impact or close as the Misfits are the Smiths. The Misfits sold out Madison Square Garden. Yeah, the Smiths would be a big one, but I still think it would pair. It pales in comparison to the Misfits. We we saw it. We've seen the the unseeable. We've seen the impossible. Danzig hated being asked the question about the Misfits. Yep, he sure did. He sure did. They paid Graves to be Danzig. A band, it is. A band certainly is like a marriage. I totally agree. Danzig lyrics are, I'm not going to even go there. We're not going to compare Danzig and Graves. For instance, if it was not, ugh, I'll never look. Okay, well, this is this is interesting. This is the one comment that, that is interesting. See, this is where Jerry, this, this guy, Timothy Olsen right here, this is he he is saying what I was saying in the before in the beginning of this video. It's true, man. You know, Jerry, Jerry put out his brand of the misfits, and people discovered the misfits because of Jerry's misfits. You can't deny it. You cannot deny that he did not contribute to the building of this band, which is why he feels the ownership that he does uh and wants, you know, you know, to have some things on his terms.
which is why in 2002 he might have been so ambivalent to not lay low and stop touring as Jerry's Misfits. So I can't blame him for something Tyler is not doing. Um, nope, but the post, yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Um, what else do we got here? I love this, guys. I am loving the debate here. It is wonderful. It really is. I love that you guys are having conversation on the, like, the show on the site. If the Misfits were united in 2002, it would have been perfect. I was a fur misfit. Misfits, perfect. Hell, Glenn wouldn't be mad. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Peter. I don't know. I think I'm glad it happened when it happened. I think that they are. I think that they've reached their final form and they're great. You know what I mean? Um, Got to be kidding me. Graves is but Yeah, that, that is hilarious. Dagger, I couldn't agree more. You know, it's funny. I don't think these guys are trolling. I think they're dead serious. Would you rather it happen or not? Jerry's misfits. Um, if I could, if, if I had my druthers, no. I would prefer that there were no Jerry's misfits. I would, I wish that Jerry had gone out as just Jerry only or the only ones or just the Jerry, Jerry only and fiends. He literally called it Jerry only and fiends. And it would be fun. We would all love it. We'd all have great respect for Jerry. Nobody would get, nobody would get angry. You know, yes, dagger. They're not trolling at all. I agree. I fully agree. Just saying that graves are better. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. I think you guys need to get your head checked about that. Uh, Jerry is a better singer and songwriter than Danzig. Uh, Dagger, I don't think so. I don't I don't think so. Yes, he did do the, the role model sort of situation there. I recently joined your Facebook group and saw the beef between someone in there and Andy from Static Age. Really made me sad because I love y'all and the division within the fandom is unnecessary. Everyone contributes. Yeah, but that all got worked out. We don't have to talk about it anymore. It's good. Those guys are all good with each other. Everything's fine. I was there in New Jersey, and I agree. It was mind-blowing. I was also, Jason, I was also in New Jersey, and it was mind-blowing. Absolutely mind-blowing. Matter of fact, J uh, Jason, remember we saw each other at the Danzig Legacy, I believe, which was also the night that I met Harley Flanagan in person. Um, I was trying to help him sell his Jerry-only base for a while. Uh, to the biggest reunions, the Misfits. I think Misfits outdid Guns N' Roses, without a doubt. Saw the What was the drumming like when you saw it with Mark and Ramon? I'm kind of curious. I'm skipping over so many comments. I'm so sorry, guys. I, I'm not trying to turn this into a comment fest. Um, I refuse to go to the reunion because of the second guitarist. I'm a purist. <laughs> oh, come on, Dagger. See, I think Dagger's trolling now. I think he went to the reunion. I think he went to the reunion. <laughs> uh, have you seen the footage of Gene Simmons talking to Kirk Hammett and saying the Misfits? Yes, I have. I, I, I have seen this. And, you know, it's Gene Simmons. What do you expect? Gene Simmons put out a record called Asshole because he's an asshole. And, you know, I don't, you know, of course. Uh, glad I'm not the only one bothered by Doyle sharing his spot. Dude, you want to know something? AC Slade is awesome in what he does. He's awesome in his role. I'm glad he's there. He's doing a great job. He's doing a great job. Um, someone gifted me two tickets the day before, and I somehow figured out a way to get wow. That that talk about a miracle. You know, it's funny in the jam band hippie scene, they call that a miracle when some when you get gifted tickets. Because there's a Grateful Dead song called I Need a Miracle. So you say, I need a miracle. And sometimes people hook up tickets. And um, yeah, that just kind of reminds me of that. So that's amazing. That's amazing. I hope we get one new album from the Misfits, from the Misfits Reunion Era Misfits. We're going to do a, I'm going to do a whole show about Misfits, uh, Misfits uh, Reunion album soon at some point. Um, I'm talking about not being able to hear what Doyle is actually playing because of some other nobody playing. You know, that's really not nice. AC Slade has um, quite the career. He's not a nobody. Uh, and he's he's holding it down and he's doing great. He's keeping, he's thickening the sound. I'm, I'm very happy that AC is there. It's sad that Glenn's mom died the night of the, yes, 
Yeah, man, that that is mind boggling. And he had to go out and he had to play that show. You know, there was no other way around it. But you know, it's kind of crazy that he was able to give the give all that he had. That was that that night was a heavy night behind the scenes and you know on stage, I guess. Um, when he does his trademark slides and quarter note bash and guitar, keep playing. <sighs> Me and my wife saw. Wow, Adam and his wife saw the Denver reunion front row. We had to stand at the rail from 11 a.m. until they went on to 10 p.m., if I remember correctly, all those hours and not even a restroom break. What was the reason for that, Adam? Was that because you wanted to um, – you just didn't want to lose your place? It, it, you know, you didn't want to lose your spot? Um, I would love for them to have French, French and Mr. Jim – I yeah, me too, and do the Static Age songs or Bobby come on for horror business. You would think – you know, that's the only, you know, it's funny, funny you bring that up, actually. That is the only way that they could possibly top what they've already done would be to do something like that, bringing out guests for guest spots. If they did, that's the only way, that's the only place they could go for Madison Square Garden. And if they don't, then they they can't top what they've done as of now, unless they do that. Doyle's guitar sound really doesn't cut through the mix on its own. I'm pretty sure Glenn hated his tone and often couldn't hear him. That is true. That is the reason. Because Doyle's playing with too much bass. He said it. He loved bottom, which sounds muffled. Gotcha. Gotcha. That happens. Guitar is a mid-range instrument. So if you cut that and overly boost bass and treble, it's not going to cut. Interesting. Thank you for explaining the physics. I, I don't understand or the mechanics, I should say. Didn't they have more? Yes, they had a they had a um, they had a, a, a Mexico show booked and it got canceled. Bill sounds very grimy. I think they would work so well on Earth D track. It's supposed to be a wall noise. Yeah, you know, I disagree, Dagger. I disagree. It's not the worst sounding album, but it's a, it's it's a sound that I love for many reasons, and I don't think it's just sentimentality. Grave stuff has a good sound, and it was recorded well. Um, that's true. We also consider the more modern production. That's, that's also true. Great conversation. You guys, Uh Oh, I lost my, I lost my spot. Holy crap. The comments are just flying in hot and heavy, man. Okay, here we go. I'm back. Uh, Earth AD is not technically good production at all. It's so muddy though. It kind of captures the essence. of Dude, you want to know something? Uh, Earth AD man, it, it just has. Listen, it, it it if in terms of mixing and mastering, it sucks. But the sound is friggin' awesome. I just wish, you know, I wish we can get a remastered version. Walk Among Us is one of the best sounding punk albums ever, and you can thank Chris D from the Flesh Eaters for that because he had he brought he flew out. Uh, Glenn flew out to remix the album before it came out on uh, Ruby Records. So you know. Um, I like the wall of sound in Earth AD. The drone free feedback was that. Yeah, I agree. Oni, I'm with you. I am with you. You gotta agree. Walk Among Us is perfect. 72, Static H2, blah, blah, blah. Yes, yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Jeff, I want your... The concert vid is available. You have to find it. You have to find it. It uh, it leaked. Somebody somebody uh, put it out. It's, it is out there. Um, it's not on YouTube, but it is out there. You gotta, you gotta look for it. Uh, it got stolen off of my hard drive and it leaked. I tried to keep it private after it was taken off my YouTube channel. I, I had a hard drive that was essentially stolen from me. Lots of very rare videos were taken from me and I was very upset about it. Um, yeah. Because he knows there's, oh my God, I can't, I can't take this Graves. Graves is better than Danzig talk. It like makes me want to barf. The, layer, the layering of vocals on Walk Among Us is great. Yes. I Wow. Yes. 100%. Alan says, I love how Jerry said that Glenn was all about the money. They're both all about the money. They're both all about the money in camp. Like, What's up, Jorge? I saw the Misfits in Newark. Security was tight with the self. Yes, it was. I still have my little sleeve case, and I ripped it open. And I just I had to rip it open. I had to rip it open on principle alone. There's a rumor of a concert DVD from the newer concert. I would love that. I don't know. I don't know if I saw cameras 
recording. But man, that would be great. That would make me very, very happy. Um, I couldn't stand Jerry's Misfits. They were obnoxious and cringe. Um, I love that Jerry said Glenn was about the money. If he was, why aren't there? That is true, man. <laughs> well, he, come on. J Glenn is about the money, too. They're both about the money. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's okay to be about the money. You know, those guys didn't sell out. And you're like, what, Jeff? How did they not sell out? It was like in 1983, they did not sell out. I mean, they were doing, they were a DIY or die band. They had their own record label. They took it as far as it could go before it imploded. Okay. Now, you know, you could say that Jerry might have sold out in the 90s or whatever, yada, yada, yada. But like, like the original band, you know, ne they never were sellouts. And the fact that, they get a chance to make money, you know, uh, off of their entrepreneurial spirit, whether they're, they were, you know, appropriating other people's IP or not, doesn't matter. It doesn't friggin' matter. I would like to see the Misfits back in the day with Motorhead, ACDC, Venom, all in the same build. That would be a really weird bill, although the Misfits do get the metal pass. They do get the metal pass. Oh, that's a good idea for a video. Uh, Graves voices leagues and... Leagues and bounds above any other singer they've had. Ugh, tired. Dude, just give it a rest, man. He he most certainly did take vo uh, vocal lessons. 100%. Can you do a re uh, an episode about the unreleased Sam Hain song, The Urge? I'll tell you what. When I have Steve Zing on uh, for Pizza Punk, I will ask him about The Urge. I don't even know if he remembers the song. But I will ask him what he remembers about the urge. I wish I had asked uh, Damien when when I had him on the show. I should have asked him. This guy disagrees with Graves politically, so of course you couple that with nostalgia. He's never going to admit Graves is a better singer. It has nothing to do with that, dude. It has nothing to do with that. It is, as a matter of fact, just to show that you have that you know so little. I love those friggin'. I like those songs from American Psycho and Famous Monsters. I do. I like a whole bunch of them. I would say I like, I would say I like about 60% of those songs. And most of them were written by Graves. I love that song, Teenage Monster, I think is a phenomenal song. Where, uh, where the Sky Ends, I think is a phenomenal song. Um, what's the song about uh, Luc Lucifer I Am, I think it's called? Great song. Graves has phenomenal songs. He has good songs. He is not, he's not good, he, for, but when it comes to the Misfits and singing old Misfits songs or, you know, the fact that that's called the Misfits, the, that new stuff, it just, it doesn't work for me, dude. It's, it's not the band. That's not what the Misfits is. I'm sorry. But glad the, that finally the Misfits put their differences and egos aside. Yeah, they did. They did. <laughs> Shout out, yeah, man, the Grateful Dead. Every every single lining's got a touch of gray. You know what I'm saying? Did Michael Graves ever meet or talk to Glenn Danzig? As far as I know, the closest, and again, I could be wrong, but the closest Michael Graves and Glenn Danzig ever got to each other was at one show, uh, Christmas, December 26, 2009. Um, a lot of people were there that night. A lot of people from a lot of bands, a lot of things. That's the only night that Michael Graves and Glenn Danzig shared a stage together. They never met, but they shared a stage. Doyle played Misfit songs. He played old Misfit songs with Danzig, and he played the Graves Misfit songs with Graves. That was Alex Story's first show singing. That was Goolsby's last show playing bass. Um, Mike Hideous was there. Uh, so Mike Hideous, Michael Graves, and Glenn Danzig were all at that location that night for that show. Crazy, crazy, crazy show. Once in a lifetime situation that has never happened since. I saw the Misfits M25 show with Marky and Robo at a. <laughs> I love how he calls it hectic eclectic. Hectic eclectic. I like your name, hectic eclectic. That's cool. Um. Marky and Robo at a crap hole in Missouri. Robo got a. <laughs> oh my God. 
I disagree with some of Danzig's politics as well. It doesn't cloud my perception. Yeah. Kiss is a spectacle. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. We really got to take a look at Marky Ramon playing with the Misfits. Somebody needs to track down a couple of videos. We're get, we got to we got to like we got to analyze those and, and take a look. Um, hung like a light switch. What's a cashew club? I don't know what a cashew is. What you talking about cashews? Oh my god! Do the comments ever end, you guys? Guys, if I can get to the bottom of these comments before you can keep producing them, I'm going to close this thing up. Um, Danzig Skeletons album, especially the song Devil's Angel Sounds Straight Up Misfits. Yeah, because he arranged that in 1979. That's a 1979 arrangement. Doyle's playing guitar and Devil's Angels love the track. No, he isn't. Doyle is not. Am I? What? No, he's not. I don't think so. I don't think so. I would love that to be true. Um, for the younger Misfits fans, yeah. They probably like Michael Graves a lot because it was the first time they were introduced to the Misfits. Eh. Devil's Angels gives me hopes that the Misfits could do another EP in Sonic the Old Days if they use the old arrangements or old songs. Yes, that is that is true. I was just listening to Collection, which got me into them and some Earth AD stuff. Um, would have been awesome if Bobby was the permanent second guitarist. It would be. It would be. And if if I had my druthers, I would much rather have Bobby over AC Slade, but we know that's never going to happen. And again, I think AC Slade doing a great job. No issues there. Bobby Steele's a member of the Misfits. He should be on stage with the Misfits at the end of the day, if, if I have to choose between the two. For sure, I was trying to imagine what it would sound like. Yeah. I wish the Madison Square Garden show was pro-recorded. would make a great album. Um, I collected as many videos from the Madison Square Garden show as I possibly could because I thought I might sync them all up and do another concert video someday. Uh, I do have a full recording. I, th I think I have soundboard recording of that. So maybe, who knows, maybe I will. It takes a lot of time. It's, it's, a, it's a big, big undertaking. If no concert album comes out, maybe eventually I'll do that. Earth AD is a fantastic album, in my opinion. Major. Yes, 100%. Dude, JM, how many times are you going to ask the question? We said this already. It, it never happened. The closest that it came was December 26, 2009. They shared a stage together, but they never actually met. Generally, it was more for the money. Yep. Glenn had the label. Seven Inch Misfits. I can't believe it. Those haven't been repeated. I mean, it's print chat. It's like printing money, and they didn't print the money. They didn't print the money. I want to believe Michael Graves and Glenn Danzig have met, which I'm sure they've had to. They've never met. They have never met. If you want Danzig's opinion on Graves, listen to his audio interview with Nerdwar from 1999. Yo, link that up, uh, Ballad. I'd like to listen to that myself. I don't know if I've ever heard that. Uh, Mrs. Murray, uh, yeah. Try to compare those records to the original run. Earth AD is a great album, just recorded like crap. Glenn, yeah, I mean... It's, it doesn't, it, I think it really is the mixing and the mastering. I think if they, I think if they went back and like, you know, had an opportunity, you know, with today's technology to really sort of do a remaster job that it would, that they could probably get it to sound really, really decent. Unrecorded Misfit songs, Harpies in the Night, West End Avenue. I don't know what you mean. If I remember correctly, Grave showed up and played a set with Dan. Yes, that's what I was talking about, JM. I said it like a hundred times. Bryce says, I think there are a lot of great songs on Famous Monsters and American Psycho. I agree with you. I'm sure From Us would praise Johnny Ramone, even though he's on the opposite end politically. Johnny Ramone was an anti-Semitic, racist, misogynistic scumbag who happened to be a part of one of the greatest bands ever and did a lot of great things. Again, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not one of those people who, you know, like, you know, I don't cancel, it's not, I don't cancel people and I don't, it's not about like, you can like something that somebody did and not like the person. I don't like Johnny Ramone as a person. I like Johnny Ramone as a musician and I like what Johnny Ramone contributed to music and I appreciate him for it. 
but Johnny Ramone was not a nice person. And it's well documented if you read about Johnny Ramone, some of the horrible things that he has done. Um, so if this is, if, if you're trying to like, like call out some sort of like hypocritical, you know, or that I'm a hypocrite in some way. Sure. I don't know what your point is with your comment, dude. Um, I heard that interview, especially story about Henry Rollins and Glenn Davis explosively chasing down. Yeah. Punk rock is dead and returned to earth or awesome. albums. see, I've never listened to either one of them all the way through. But I have to say, I have listened to the song Teenage Monster. And I think it's one of the finest songs that Michael Graves has ever written. It's a great song. So there you go, guys. Despite everything that I've said about Michael Graves, despite making the videos that I've made about Michael Graves, despite confronting Michael Graves on his show, I think that Michael Graves is talented. I like his songs. I have listened to his songs since I've had you know, those interactions with Michael Graves. And it cannot be denied that he's great, just in the way that Johnny Ramone is great. He is. Johnny Ramone invented a great style of guitar playing. Doesn't make doesn't mean he's not a shitty guy who did some shitty shit. You know, I love Michael Jackson, but we all know that Michael Jackson probably diddled some kids. Still like Michael Jackson, still think he can dance like a mofo. Matter of fact, I just showed my son Michael Jackson. We were dancing to Michael Jackson the other day, you know. It is possible to compartmentalize things. You know what I mean? Like you can compartmentalize. Some people can't. I have friends that are like, once somebody does something bad, they are excommunicated. Like I can never listen to it again. I can never, I will say this. I was, I, there's a band called No Bunny and they are a band that's near and dear to my heart. And I always tell everybody about No Bunny and how much I love No Bunny. Uh, and it came out that no bunny was like, he was a, a really creepy fucked up dude who did some really, really messed up things, committed crimes. He committed crimes um, and really deserves to go to jail for what he did. I don't know what happened to him. He basically imploded last year, right before or right after what happened with Michael Graves. Actually, it is really hard for me to reconcile this. It's really hard for me to champion his music with everything that happened. His actions did taint the music. And so it's very bittersweet for me. I still enjoy it. He's still one of my all-time favorite artists. I knew him. I interviewed him for my Misfits documentary. He knew me by name. I would every time he came to town, I would see him. You know, I would go, I was always there. I supported the band like no other. And then I found out he did some really, really gross, like irrehensible, like committed crimes, committed crimes against people. And, um, it really, it broke, it breaks my heart and, uh, it's hard, you know, it's hard to compartmentalize this stuff sometimes other times, not so much, especially like a guy like Johnny Ramone, who's long dead, who I've never met. It's very easy to listen and enjoy the Ramones, despite the fact that Johnny Ramone is a crappy person. That's all I want to say. <sighs> I don't know when Graves wants to or is feeling it, but he he sings the shit out of the Danzig era songs. You know, Joe, I've heard you say this many times. I have yet to see a video that supports that to be true. Because every time I see a video of Michael Graves singing those Danzig songs, and I listen, if anybody would know this to be true, it would be Joe. Joe toured with Michael Graves for 16-something years, okay? Like, you know, he knows, he knows Michael better than a whole bunch of people, you know, uh, uh, you know, spent many, many countless hours with Michael Graves. If anybody would know, it would be Joe. However, Joe, I'm saying that I've never seen it. I've never seen it, uh, uh, reproduced in, in a live video. And, you know, if you want to text me some or show me some of the best examples, I'd love to see him, but yeah, I don't know, man. I'm assuming you're talking about that show in Sayreville, the, um, the what you call it the that 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 show, and that time I brought Graves to Glenn's front door. That was what was that in in L.A. Maybe no, they most definitely did not. I've only been talking about his singing, his voice, and these comments for debating. Blah 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 blah. blah. This was supposed to be an hour long video at most, forty five minutes. I was supposed to do this for forty five minutes. I literally can't.
not do these videos for less than two hours. And it's really friggin' annoying. Nothing against you guys. I'm so grateful that you're all here. Please, if you're enjoying this, please like, share, subscribe. Please subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. There are ways to support this channel. Subscribe, like, comment, all that. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I'm enjoying this. It's not that I'm not. It's just that I was very much trying to do a thing, and I think I was pseudo-successful. I was trying to do a thing, and I'm not sure how well I succeeded. Um, yeah, we were supposed to get a Who Killed Marilyn reissue. It never happened. But, man, it would be like printing mother effing money. Check out Grandmaster Flash. That's weird. We're going to do a devil lock patch, and it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Same here. Glenn and Henry would have kicked. <laughs> Did you hear how Doyle? Yes, yes. He talks about it on that live wire video. Pretty great. Pretty, pretty great. Um, I'm sure they're going to come back. JM, I'm just breaking your balls, bro. You don't, you don't have to apologize for anything. If anything, the only person that has to apologize is that guy. I don't even know his name. I can't pronounce his name. Who keeps just has such a hard on for Graves and is like, Graves is better than Danzig. Like, just, dude, chill with that. It's just so annoying. Like, I, I appreciate you're here and I appreciate you're contributing to the conversation. And I appreciate that you have taught me a couple of things about guitar because I don't play guitar. But like, I, you know, again, it's a tired argument, dude. It's a tired argument is all I'm saying. Where can I see? <laughs> dude. I got to tell you, Jerry's tattoo of the of Jesus with the devil lock is awesome. And if I'm ever in a room with Jerry only, I'm going to walk right up to him and be like, Jerry, I freaking love your tattoo. I freaking love your tattoo. I've had a specific live performance of Graves singing Astro Zombies stuck in my head for 24-7 for two weeks. So send it to me, Joe. Send me the performance. If it's that one that's in the Lodi, the Lodi um, group, then you need to get your head checked, buddy. For real, that I thought it was not good at all. I thought it was terrible. Truth, I don't. What are you? What are you referring to, John? Voice of Doom. What you mean? Please do what? I'm so sorry. I'm catching up on these comments. Please do what exactly? Didi was the best for me. <laughs> no, no, from us. I dig you. I was replying to the guy saying that you didn't like. Oh. <laughs> So sorry. I apologize for going off on that whole rant about, you know, compartmentalizing artists that have done really, really shitty things and liking their art. I think you can separate art from the artist. They do believe it's possible. I just think that it it's subjective and it depends on the situation and the type of crime and how connected to the person is to the art. Like, for instance, if a stand-up comic does something really fucked up and, like, they get canceled... AKA they they are held responsible for the, their actions in a in a court of public opinion, you know, for better or for worse. It's a lot harder to enjoy the stand-up comedy if it's connected to the person that's delivering the jokes. Whereas it's a lot easier for me to watch a, a Roman Polanski movie. I'm not going to stop watching Rosemary's Baby because Roman Polanski committed a horrible horrible crime. You know, do I think Roman Polanski should go to jail for what he did? Absolutely. I think he should pay for his crimes and go to jail. Does that mean I'm not going to, I'm going to stop watching Rosemary's Baby? No. There's a lot of people that made Rosemary's Baby besides Roman Polanski. And, you know, you can't cancel Rosemary's Baby because of something that Roman Polanski did. Should Roman Polanski pay? One billion percent. Should Rosemary's Babies pay? No. I don't think so. I really don't think so. What are the barriers in place that are preventing full-length elms from being truly remastered? Um, so if you're referring to Earth AD, they don't have the masters. They don't have the tapes. They got sent to Germany to that when they were doing aggressive pr production or whatever, audio production, and it never it, it never came back. It was gone. Jerry Ramon was an asshole for sure. Jerry Ramon, total, total opposites and much nicer. Yeah, you know. Been hearing that Doyle played on Devil's Angels a lot lately. Not sure where that's coming from. Yeah, I did not. Sean, I have not heard that. I mean, I have not. No, I've not, this is the first time I'm hearing it, but I've never seen anywhere that states that otherwise. I would love for it to be true. I hope it's true. We could technically call that a Misfits reunion on record. Uh, Doyle did um, play it live with Danzig, though. I did not know that. Maybe it, maybe it is true. I mean, clearly he would know the song. 
click the link. Danzig comes in at 50 minutes on the audio. I don't see ballot. I don't see any link. I'm so sorry, buddy. Did he play with GDI? <laughs> yes, he did. And he, even Didi Ramon couldn't be in a band with Gigi Allen. He walked away. He walked away. Doyle mentioned that he also recorded. Yes, he did a guitar solo. He didn't even know what the tra- what he was doing or something. He didn't know what this, the song was going to be for or, or, or something, something along the lines. Michael tends to get bored with the vocal lines. Yeah, you know what, Joe? See, Joe is actually giving us an inside scoop on why Michael does what he does to the songs. At he he tends to get bored with the vocal lines he commits to tape and sings around them, scats around them, and I hate that. Sings harmonies of them to me, it's annoying. Yeah, I can't stand it. I can't stand it. This is what makes him so such a bad singer. He doesn't show the songs any respect. He gets bored and he doesn't show Danzig songs respect. You're in Danzig's house, whether Danzig is in the band or not. You're in Danzig's house. Act accordingly. Sing the songs the way they should be sung. Don't do that. Don't, don't you know, do that. I can't stand it. It just doesn't, it, it bothers me to no end. But sometimes he absolutely nails them as well. And will on maybe only ever one or some. Yeah, I don't know, man. I just, I don't know. Hey, Joe, you're great. Um, exactly. I try not to mix politics and music, even though sometimes, yeah. Now, now the flip side of that, you know, again, and you know, when I made my videos about Michael Graves and yada, yada, I'm like confronted that whole thing. I never was saying, I'm never, I'm not saying cancel Michael Graves. I'm not saying don't listen to Michael Graves. Actually, I did once write that, but it was a joke. It was a joke. It was not serious. Um, listen to Michael Graves, listen to his stuff. Just know who he is. That's all I'm saying. Like know who he is. That's it. That that's literally the point. If I had to boil it down to a single sentence, it's literally that like, like listen to whoever you want, you know, he doesn't have to be, he doesn't, he's not canceled, you know, listen to whoever you want, but know who they are, know what they stand for and know what they're, 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 they're shouting about. From their platform. That's all. That's literally the extent of my my point when I was doing those things. I'm very thank you for subscribing. I really appreciate it, JM. If anybody else wants to subscribe, if you have not subscribed, please do. Thank you, Tony B. Diseased. I appreciate that. I really, really do. I really, really do. Thank you, Alan. Love it. I'm so. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you so much, and thank you for joining in on the conversation. Again, I, I listen. Even if I'm irked by some of the comments and you know the the, the stuff, I'm, I want to thank every single one of you. Even the stuff that annoys me, I want to thank all of you for jumping in and participating in the conversation. I appreciate it. It's it's wonderful fun, and I'm glad you're here. So thank you, and thank you for watching and supporting. Even the even though yes, I'm a sucker for protest music and music that speaks out on social. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> Michael Jackson sick. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's obsessed with Michael Graves. He was obsessed. Is he gone? Like, oh no, he's still here. I, I see his comments coming. The video, oh, dude, Peter, send me that uh, angry video game nerd video. I want to see it. I love Cinemasker, man. Love that dude. That dude's the man. Two years ago, I took a tour of Lodi history, dude. Very soon. I'm going to have it. I'm going to have it in a video. I actually was just emailing with the Lodi police department today. You will never believe why they, the, the Lodi police department reached out to me over something over an issue. And we actually got to talking. And so I'm like going to be working with them on when I go, I'm, I'm planning a trip to Lodi very soon for a few reasons. And when I do, uh, I'm going to stop by the Lodi police station. That's all I can say about that right now. Like I said, when you fucking blah, 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 me. <laughs> My comments were made talking to him, debating over. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Stink. I, you know, calm down. Calm down. You don't, I don't have a stank ass attitude. I just, I, I'm just tired of the, the, the graves is better than Danzig thing. But listen, you're in, I'm glad you're here. You're entitled to your opinion. 
This is not like, you know, whatever, whatever, man. Let bygones be bygones, all right? Are there... <laughs> Hugh, you have lost Misfits tracks on the mind, bro. Always with the lost Mr. Misfits tracks. I thought of Graves, Danzig, like Dio, Ozzy, both of their... I Nah, man. Xander... Xander, I hear what you're saying. I think that's a, I think that's a fair assessment. I don't agree with it. I, I think I could give several reasons why I don't agree with it. Um, you know why? You know why I don't agree with it? You know what it is? The deal thing just worked. That's it. That's literally it. The deal thing worked. The Graves thing didn't. It just didn't. What, you know what's funny? Actually, it's funny. Xander, thank you for bringing this up. It's funny you say that because when even when Dio was in the band and then left the band, Dio was not synonymous with Black Sabbath. People don't say Dio is Black Sabbath or, you know, people do say Dio's. I, I'm one of them. I'm one of them. I will admit I like Dio doing live Ozzy songs better than Ozzy doing them. I know it's blasphemy. I just think that he does the songs better than Ozzy. Recordings, maybe not so much, but 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 live songs, he just adds an energy that is not there. There's more, I don't know. He just I just think he does it better than Ozzy. Does that take away from OG Black Sabbath being OG Black Sabbath? No, not in any way, shape, or form. Different situation, but thank you for trying. Thank you for trying. Some classic Mr. songs that were yes, yes, there were. It's so sad when the music gets lost. It's not lost for all intents and purposes, it still exists, but it is uh not released. Graves is such a capable singer, he's able to sing basically whatever with alongside, in addition to, in harmony with recorded vocal lines. Some hate it, even me sometimes, but sometimes he kills it. Look, Joe, as I said. And I named this, I gave a laundry list of songs. I said, Teenage Monster. I said, When the Sky Ends. I said, Lucifer, I Am. I said, uh, what's another song that he did? Um, the Hallway Song. The Hallway Song, Nobody Likes Me is a good song. There are some good, there are some good grave songs. Matter of fact, I think I prefer, no, I mean, I like those. I like those American Psycho songs too. I like those songs. The, all those songs are good. I don't. I. It's just that Graves. Danzig was the Misfits to me. Danzig was the Misfits. That's it. That's what it is. Ozzy is not Black Sabbath. There you go. That's the cusp of the argument right there. Ozzy does not make Black Sabbath, but Danzig does make the Misfits. Does that make sense, you guys? I think that makes perfect sense right then and there. It's. It works like this. You can't have the Misfits without Danzig. You can have Black Sabbath without Ozzy. And that is the difference. Holy shit. Dude, I just, what the fuck? Thank you. Ballad of the Broken, just tip, just an incredible tip. But there's no, he didn't leave a comment with it. He just tipped me $50. And I just want to say to Ballad of the Broken, I salute you and thank you for supporting this this channel, man. Like I'm I'm so touched. You know, again, all of this money, I am saving all of this money because I hope to take things to the next level. I'm trying to grow the channel as much as I can. Eventually, when it becomes the when it's right to, I'm going to upgrade everything. I'm not there yet. Uh I don't have a a, a day job yet, but eventually I will and you're going to see a lot more expansion here, but I just want to thank Ballad of the Broken for his very generous support and donation, but it doesn't come with a comment. Usually these have a comment attached. And anyway, I want to tip my hat to you. I can't even show it. There's nothing to show. It, it just, I just see it on my thing. It just shows that I was tipped $50. So I just want to say thank you very much, Ballad of the Broken. I really appreciate your support. That's all I want to say about that. Um, Sorry. Now I feel like I owe it to finish these comments. <laughs> I got to do it. I got to do it. We got to do it. All right. So Joe was saying that he's a capable singer. I explained why Dio, Dio Sabbath works because Dio is not Sabbath. Danzig is Misfits. That's the difference. 
True story, DD remote. Right. Yes, he could not handle DG Allen. It's a hilarious story. Didn't Johnny remote? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He did. He stole um, Linda. Linda was originally with Joey. She left Joey. Uh, she left Joey for Johnny. Uh, I have always suspected, and I've done a lot of reading about the Ramones. I am not nearly as well versed on the Ramones as I am the Misfits, but I know a lot about the Ramones. And um, you know, uh, I actually just I reread Monty's book, Monty the Monty Ramone, Monty Melnick, the uh, tour manager. He was on Pizza Punk. You can check out that episode. It's on this channel. And um, he was he was. Um, his book goes in depth about that, about that. I think it was a power move. It was, it, that was Johnny's big middle finger. I mean, he really did love Linda. They loved each other, but I think it was a big middle finger to Joey. Yeah. Ballad. It's not sharing. I'm really sorry about that. I can't, I don't see it, buddy. I don't see it. Um, it's not there. Ballad. Are you in the Facebook group uh, on, on uh, uh, the Lodi Facebook group? Post it there. Post it in there and we'll take a look at it. What do you mean by this comment? AM nostalgia. Why? Because of because of Danzig? I, I don't I don't understand your comment. There's an author from Jersey Philly. He has a fiction book coming out this year that will feature many references to Danzig and Graves era misfits. Pretty cool. Um, what's that about? Tell me about it. Hey, thanks for stopping by. And you're the best. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. I really do. I really do appreciate it. You always show up and comment. That's how Michael Graves sings, like he's getting ready to do a jumping jacks with hype. We are the castle. This may last you much, and I am a chicken flapping my wings. Little fly away. Yes, that's that's how Michael Graves sings. But it's all in good fun. It's just poking fun. It's not not nothing. Again, Michael Graves definitely has talent. Look, look, listen, listen. I talk all this shit about Michael Graves, but you know what Michael Graves accomplished? Michael Graves got to a place after essentially destroying his career in 2004, whether you whether whether you think he was right or wrong. He essentially torpedoed his own career in 2004, blackballed himself, crawled up from being blackballed on the back of Loki, no less, and managed to get back to a place where he was doing 90 show runs per season, I think. Right, Joe? Is that how it works? It's 90 dates per, like if you do, if, if, if you guys did a spring tour, it'd be 90 shows. And then there was a fall tour it was 90 shows. He's doing 180 shows a year and he's making six figures doing it off of his art. I don't do that. You don't do that. Michael Graves does that or did that until he destroyed he destroyed any prospect of doing that ever again. Like he was at least. Um point being that no matter how much fun I make Michael Graves, Michael Graves will do stuff that I will never ever ever be able to do. So I just want to say that too, you know. At the end of the day, stiff. What's going on? What's the story, Jerry? <laughs> Welcome, stiff. We all, Pod. We always have fun here. Pod's been around for for some time now, and he always comes in with these one liner zingers, and they're great. They are great. The Misfits movie should be a triple trilogy, <laughs> dude. I want that so badly. Hey, Dagger. I don't know if you saw it. We had a um. We we ha we played a whole game where we tried to cast our misfits biopic, so <laughs> check that out. Hey, Alan, thank you for thank you for watching. Truly, I I really do appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. Hold on, hold on. How entitled is this man that people having a debate annoys him, dude? It's not, that's not, the debate isn't what annoys me. It's just that you were like, it's just, it was just that like you're calling out this like tired thing of like, you know, uh, Graves is better than Danzig, embrace it, you know, embrace Graves because Danzig's just like a nostalgia trip. I don't know. Listen, you most, sir, you want to know something? 
And you are entitled to have this debate here right now. I have no problem with it, truly. I don't want you to leave. I want you to keep doing what you're doing. Even if I don't agree with you, you are entitled to do what you want to do. And I appreciate you being here. How about that? How about that? I, I mean, it doesn't get more civil than that on YouTube. Come on. <laughs> yes. I, Dude, those Halloween videos that James Rolfe does, oh, my God, I should get James Rolfe on Pizza Punk. I'm sure I could do it, too. If a Misfits movie was made, who would play his band? So I said, here's who I said for, for um, what's his face? Uh, la, 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 la. Um, for Jerry Only, uh, Bill Skarsgård, the guy who played It in the new It movies, he's the perfect Jerry Only. He would be Jerry Only. I.E., listen to him sing in Uncle, <laughs> Uncle Marky's band. He's so much more capable than Joey. He can and sometimes does sing circles around those vocal lines. A lot of the times it's cool. Sometimes it ain't. I, you know, I don't know. I don't know how to qualify this more capable than Joey, because I got to tell you, people don't give Joey Ramone the, you know, Joey Ramone did evolve with his vocals. His vocals at the end of the Ramones are so different. Like just the way he was singing on those albums and live. Is so different. And that was an intentional choice that he made. Uh, it, it's so different from the early stuff. I don't know. I don't know if Graves is more capable than Joey. I would, I don't know. I don't know how to qualify that. You know, Joe, here's the difference between Graves and Joey. How about this? How about this, Joe? Ready for this? Graves is a singer. Joey is a vocalist. Joey, like in the same way that Keith, Morris is not a singer. He's a vocalist in the same way that Henry Rollins is not a singer. He's a vocalist. I think there's a huge difference. A vocalist doesn't necessarily sing well or sing traditionally better than a singer while a singer can actually sing and do all the, the singy things that a singer sings. If that makes any sense. Again, not a musician here. Don't know. Don't actually know. Just, just, just put, putting out my opinion. Never mind the Graves talk. I'm waiting for Black Aria three. Keep waiting, Oni. I don't know. I don't know when it's coming. Oliver Stone's The Misfits. That would be something else. What you know? Diabolical bathtub. What, what is a diabolical bathtub? Tell me. What is a diabolical bathtub? I've got to know. Um. Can we talk about the Merp? Dude, we talked about the Merp. I talked about the Merp so much with Mike Hideous. It's in the Pizza Punk episode. Go listen. We also, Joe, who's in this chat right now, it was Joe, Loki, Robbie Bloodshed, Howie Wowie, and Ramy Stein. We all talked about the Merp and Merp's tattoo in uh in that 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 Loki, that live pizza Dr. Loki episode where we didn't actually take any advice. We didn't take any calls. Is the angry video game nerd also from New Jersey? I wonder how he feels about the Misfits. I would love, see now that's a guy I would love to see you do a video about the Misfits. It would make me insanely jealous because the Cinemassacre guy would just smoke circles around me. He would just put together, whether he knows a lot about the Misfits or not, he would put together the best scripted video about the Misfits. I would love it. I would. It might be very superficial, but it would be awesome. It would be really, really awesome. He did. He did it as often singing for Marky as he did in the Misfits. Well, that's fair. Very good point. Dio did great with Live Evil. Yeah, yeah, Xander. I, I pre listen, Xander. You, you gave me a run for my money for a minute because I was thinking in my head. I'm like, well, how is it different? And I couldn't verbalize it. And then I thought in my head, I was like, wait a minute. Like, like you know who Sabbath is? Sabbath is Tony Iommi and Geezer Butler. That Sabbath, if you have those two elements, you have a version of Black Sabbath. Those are the dudes that are primarily writing the songs. And they transcended Ozzy when they got Dio. And then they went back to Ozzy. And it, it, they created so much so that they wanted to respect, they wa also wanted to respect Black Sabbath with Ozzy by turning what they had with Dio into heaven and hell at the end. 
the, the, those last years when Dio was singing with those guys, they didn't call themselves Black Sabbath anymore. They called themselves Heaven and Hell. It made perfect sense. And the Misfits could have called themselves the Resurrected, and it would have been so much cooler. And my fandom of Michael Graves would be different. Like I, my fandom for those American psycho famous monster songs would be so much different if it wasn't called the misfits, because to me, the misfits, because what is a band's identity? A band's identity comes in the person who is the front man. It comes uh, with the founder of a band and it comes with the person who's writing the songs. Who did all three of those things in the misfits? Glenn Danzig. Glenn Danzig founded the band. Glenn Danzig was the front man of the band. And Glenn Danzig wrote the songs. Therefore, the identity of the Misfits is synonymous with Glenn Danzig. When someone comes back with the band without the thing that they're synonymous with, they, they create brand confusion and they create a problem. If you call that thing the resurrected, it's a different story. It's the same story as the Minutemen. For those of you who don't know who the Minutemen were, that was Mike Watt, George Hurley, and Dee Boone. Dee Boone, the guitar player, singer, and frontman, he died. And they broke up as a band. And then a fan of the Minutemen convinced Mike Watt and George Hurley to come out of retirement and do a new band. I don't know if they played Minutemen songs, but they made music exactly like the Minutemen with a new guy fronting it. Do you know what they call themselves? Firehose. That was the name of the band. Silly name, but they call themselves Firehose. And you want to know something? You never hear any hate for Firehose trying to be the Minutemen. You know why? They didn't try to fill those shoes. You know, that's just rude. Don't I am not a simp. You, you know, that was really mean. I, I don't deserve that. I you, 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 what what the hell, man? That would be awful. Oliver Stone's The Misfits. Just watch the door film. Jerry once said that he wanted someone young that they could mold into the perfect singer. You can't do that with people. No wonder it imploded. I mean, you can do that with people. Glenn kind of did that in The Misfits. Glenn did that. Glenn and Jerry did that with Doyle. It does work. It does work. But it didn't work in that situation. Or at least it, it broke down eventually in that situation. Brody Dale is the next lead singer, should lead us in the next Misfits era. I don't know who Brody Dale is. Thank you. Uh, um, is Jerry going to remaster Christ on 180 gram vinyl in the near future? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. That would that would surely sell. It'd be great. It would be a great record, record day exclusive. My link to the interview won't send in the chat, but you are all welcome. Thank you for the content. Thank you, dude, for, for the tip. And we got another supporter. Pete also sent uh, a super sticker. You know what's funny? For some reason, uh, Ballads does not show, but Pete's does. I think it's because Pete did the sticker. In any case, I want to thank Pete for the support as well as Ballad. The two of you guys are, are friggin' awesome, and I appreciate your support. I'll, that's all I can say over and over again. Thank you for su for supporting the channel and the content. I, I appreciate it. You know, it's funny. Some guy was like, "Dude, you have so many uh, ads on these on these videos. You know, screw you. You know." And I just like, you know, I'm like, "Dude, it's all free. It's free content." I have literally sat here for hours and hours and hours. Whether there's value to the content or not, I have sat here for hours and hours and hours putting together these shows for free. All you got to do is just press skip on an ad. What's the big deal? You know, like it's not like you don't have to pay anything. There's no paywall. You know, <laughs> it's just so funny. It's just so funny. I don't get people. Guy about bathtub, bro. That would be sick. Imagine a comic book and trading card bundle. I would love some trading cards. Uh, not much to talk about. Yeah, Robbie is right. Yes, he did bounce. He did bounce uh, for the, the, the he dude bounced the misfits for a wifey divorce a couple of years later. He did. He did. And he also has the only Christ the Conqueror tattoo in existence. Um, I, I can't, dude, I can't make that comparison. You can't say, I can't say one over the other. It just doesn't, it doesn't work like that for me. I love them both. I love them both for different reasons. If I had to go with one, it would probably be the misfits 
The Misfits is my is my numero uno, but you know, I love them both. Glenn started the Misfits, Jerry was the second bassist. Jerry was the second bassist. I can't see how Jerry could own the name now. It's only because he funded them. I mean, he own we just I just explained at the beginning of this video that was supposed to be not two hours long, and now it is. Uh, why that? Why that's the case? But the, it's very much, very much owns it because of the lawsuit, dude. He wasn't paid for any back royalties. I have to get some more. They came from Lodi Gear. Coffee cup is not enough. That's right. And if you, if anybody wants, so what's Pete is talking about? Pete bought a coffee cup. I, I use a, a, a fulfillment service, and they they put they basically put this stuff very soon. Pete, I promise you, there is going to be some really cool. They came from Lodi stuff coming. Um, I have some ideas. You know, I tried to do the 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 cheeseburger T-shirt. It actually got taken off. I guess the golden arches look too much like the real thing. But, um, dude, I, listen, I I appreciate I appreciate the support. I really really do. I really really do. Um, thank you. I felt like I've learned something about the Merp. <laughs> I sent you the Dan's art. The Danzig Nardwar interview on Instagram. Thank you. I'll check. I never check those DMs, but I will check now that you you said that. I I, I let all my my private messages they just pile up and pile up and pile up until I'm overwhelmed. I gotta check them all and read them all. So if you send me stuff and I don't get back to you, I'm sorry. It's just it's the nature of the beast with just so much going on. I you know it's hard enough. I try to respond. You know I try to respond to every single YouTube comment that's left on my videos. I do that for a lot of reasons, but I really do try to respond to every single comment. He's also the only man in the world with the Christ the Conqueror tattoo. Jeff has a photo. That's true. I do. I do. I've had I've had to quit multiple misfits groups because of the weirdo aggressive grave supporters. <laughs> it's a plague on the community. This account is literally labeled as 77 to 83, yet here we go again. It's just it just is the nature of the beast, man. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Sabbath sabotage is perfect. Yeah, I mean, again, all of those, all of those Ozzy albums are great. They're all great. Masters of Reality, I think, is the best one. I uh, know that's actually true, actually. But Masters of Reality is great too. It's but that's not my. I'm just saying that. I'm just saying that they can transcend their lead singer. Their lead singer wasn't the be-all, end-all. They didn't lose the identity of being Sabbath. The only time they lost, they truly lost the identity of being Sabbath is when there wasn't Geezer Butler and T Tony Iommi. Those two guys made up the band. There were weaker versions of the band, but they were still the band when you had both of those guys together. And you, Oh, you posted in the Facebook group. Okay, I'll check there as well. Thank you. The Sabbath thing is completely subjective to me. It is. To me, Ozzy's voice really is the sound of Sabbath. Speak of the Devil is one of the greatest live albums ever. Dio with Sabbath was just a different band. Well, so stiff, so much so that they call themselves Heaven and Hell, as I said. Look at this clown. But I have a hard-on for debating with people about someone's music. Are you talking about, am I the clown? Do I look like a clown to you? Do I look silly? I, I don't know. I don't know the quote. Oh, am I funny? Funny like a clown? It was like Christopher Walken doing Joe Pesci in uh, Goodfellas. I'm not weighing in on the quality of Graves' material. I don't care what the songs of his of his you like. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hold on. Oh, my God, guys. The comments never stop. I don't care what songs as you like. Don't like. Never heard or refuse to listen to. I was commenting on his ability to sing Misfit songs. You know what, Joe? Fair enough. Fair enough. Thank you for clarifying that. We all know that Mike Hideous was the only proper replacement for Danzig, the crusted makeup, the original golf upbringing. Well, he most certainly had more of a pedigree than, than Graves. That's for sure. That's for sure. It would have been very interesting to see what Hideous would have done with that band if that had worked out. Does anybody remember the Misfits wrestling? Yes, we do. Do you think it might have been awkward for Doyle circa 84 to 88? That is two childhood friends, Erie Vaughn and Zing. I no, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think it would be awkward at all. I think at that point they had, I think at that point they had put it behind them. They had put the past behind them and they were 
trying to be Christ the Conqueror, you know? The nostalgia thing was you addressing my politics and nostalgia comment. You said, no, I was wrong. And immediately said something to the effect of he's not better because, all right, whatever, dude. <laughs> Gonna crack. Hey, thanks for showing up, man. I appreciate it. Thanks. Thank you. Also, I never said embrace it all that. I made a comment about the complexities of each lineup's music, and then the conversation went from there. He said he's a better singer. Okay. All right, dude. Fine. In the Door was such an underrated song. It's a great song. Oh, yeah. Matthew Willard as Jerry only would be great. Yes, I agree. Would love that. That would be interesting. No, no. Okay, maybe visually. But like, could you, Matthew Willard's too goof? Oh, well, Jerry can be goofy too. Maybe, maybe. Joey's vocals are like poetry to me. They are, man. Another great show. Hey, thank you, Pete. Pete, thank you. And and, it, and I love when you you come in here and contribute to the, to the conversation. It's always appreciated. Like I said, initially, when, if he wants to sing them as Glenn did on the record, he absolutely can, and then some. Whether you like, hate, or consider him a Nazi is a very few limitations vocally. But he said initially he wants to sing them as Glenn did on the record. He absolutely can, and then some. Okay, but I have all I'm saying is I, I'm not disagreeing with you on this. I'm saying I have yet to see it. I've never seen this. I've never seen him attempt it, attempt this. I've seen him. I think you act, Joe. You nailed it perfectly when you said. He gets bored and he doesn't. He doesn't. It's not. It, it, he's not uh, taking it seriously. He doesn't take it seriously. For whatever reason, he doesn't take it seriously. And I don't know. People shouldn't listen to Danzig or deny that Graves era wouldn't have existed. Wait, what? People shouldn't listen to Danzig or deny that Graves era wouldn't have existed without Danzig. I don't. What? I don't understand what that means. Joey Ryan, Texas Chancellor Massacre with Took My Baby Away. It's true. It's so true. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It took my baby away from me. <laughs> Henry Rollins spoken word. They are, man. And he is he is a a a a truly a word linguist. He's an artist with words, but he's not a singer. Henry Rollins will be the first person to tell you that he's not a singer. Is this to me? Uh, Joe, I think this guy is trying to start a fight with you. You know, what's funny. You're a huge fan of Graves. Uh, I can't even pronounce your name. Is it AM? You're a huge fan of Graves. You know, Joe, Joe played with Graves for years, for years and years and years. He was in, he was in bands with Graves and Sean William Scott as Henry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What is it? What are you doing? The the 90s? You're doing the 90s, like teen version of the Misfits movie. That's what this is. He would be good though. He does, he has that 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 Rollins look. He could he could do it. Uh it's the stupidest thing I could think of. He is a legend, dude. He's from New Jersey. <laughs> Caveman can play Danzig in the movie. Geezer wrote the lyrics and Tony was the riff master. He ate it the truth. Well, there are good singers, good front men, and vocalists with good voices, different things. Yeah, dude, totally agree. Totally agree. What? Where's Danzig and Jerry only? I don't know. Where are they? New Jersey? He does. Wow. I, man, I should get him on the show. That's hilarious. I did not know that. Graves Misfits is Misfits 95 to me. Not the real thing. Not as good, but still good. Yeah. Tony wrote the riffs. Geezer, most of the lyrics. But, you know, that is true. Dagger Love does bring up a point. Ozzy did write the melodies. I read that in, uh, where did I read that? I read that in an Ozzy book. He did write the melodies. And as we know, uh, isn't it lyrics and melodies that create song identity or, you know, uh, decree whether who wrote a song? It's the melody and the lyrics. When's the legend? Joe's legend. Cool guy. Hmm. 
I know, right? Simp. That Yes, they are. Listen to Michael Graves' vocals on Summer's End, Head Wound. It's a killer track. Made me appreciate his voice. A totally Okay, you want to know something? I will check that. Mark, I will check that out. I will check that out. You're saying that it made you appreciate his voice in a totally different style of music. I would. I will check it out, and I will get back to you. No, you, the buckaroo boy. The buck, what? Calling Jeff a simp. It's a hood word for 20 years ago. Every geek online uses it now. I, I don't know. Good metaphor. If you were to liken a vocalist to a piano or a keyboard, Graves is a six-foot wide grand piano, and Joey Ramon is a three-foot Casio. <laughs> Joey, great voice. All right. All right. Um, oh, the distillers. She does hybrid. But yes, yes, yes. I think I've heard that cover. Ah, <laughs> good for you, man. That's awesome. I'm. You know what? I'm glad that this services you in that way. Like, oh, oh, no. Oh, no, I have to press skip on an ad. Boo-hoo. Oh, my God. This dude did it again. This dude did it again. He's uh, another friggin' tip. Ballad, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Truly appreciated. Thank you for your support. Thank you, addition. I don't know why this one shows up and your other one didn't, but I just want to acknowledge everybody knows that thank you. Thank you for your contribution. People compare greatly. I'll, I'll check. I will check on Facebook. I'm curious to see that interview with Danzig, with Nardwar. Um, people compare greatly produced Graves records to old Glenn recordings. But truthfully, Danzig's vocals are at another level. Glenn's prime vocals live sound even better than, yeah, dude. I, 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 I totally agree. And you know what? Let's see. I would love to see. I would love to see, you want to know at the same time, they're different singers too. I was about to say, let's see Graves do less than zero, you and me. He couldn't do it, dude. He couldn't sing you and me. He wouldn't be able to handle that. There's a lot of Danzig songs that Graves can't sing. There's a lot of, I feel like there's a lot of Misfit songs. In if he were to try to repeat what Danzig is doing, that maybe he wouldn't be able to do. Joey equals great voice. Graves equals great vocalist. Glenn, a bit of all. Huh. Well, what about the singing aspect? What about being a singer? Having a great voice, being a vo great vocalist. But I feel like, I feel like Joey, Joey does have a good voice, but I think Joey more than anything is a vocalist. Joey can sing in that Joey way. That's all. He literally does that one thing, but he does it super duper well. And it's beautiful. He's a beautiful voice. And he, as I said, he did evolve it. It does evolve. But you ask, you ask him to do anything else or you give him something technical and he's not, he probably wouldn't have been able to replicate it in any way, shape or form. I like these chats because I never know what we're talking about. You got, you're, you're lost in the ether, man. They do just simply rule. Oh. Wait, did you know he sells his DVDs at a store near me, Colossal Fun? Did you uh he grew up right around the street from me? Wow. You ever saw him just around, just hanging out? Sam Hain records sound demented. Love that grant at Misery Tomb. The first reunion set was too. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that came later. Imagine with all the time Glenn had during a COVID lockdown, he took out a Yamaha DX7 and wrote some dungeons. <laughs> I'm sorry. That made me really laugh. That was really funny because I totally can. And especially, you know, I don't know who listened to that podcast with like the, the girl. She's like a stripper and she like went out with Danzig on a date or something, or like a friend date or something, and just talked about how much of a curmudgeon Danzig is. And I just imagine Danzig, like, sitting in his room with all his cats with the Yamaha, like, trying to do Black Aria 3. It just makes me laugh. 
hate the comparison discussion, but had to say it, whatever. Graves error is entirely different. Yeah, dude, I the comparison discussion is tired. I, this this is the curse of, of Jerry only using the Misfits name. Fuck yeah, you can get one. Xander, if you want a They Came From Lodi shirt, check out in the description. By the way, if you're new, if you're just joining us, please subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications if you want to know when I go live. I usually don't announce when I go live. I just do it. And whoever shows up, shows up. I do not promote this shit. I just do it. Um, if you want to buy a shirt, it's in a link in the description. You can get a They Came From Lodi shirt. You can get a hoodie or you can get a sour cream shirt. I'm too lazy to actually pimp it right now. I don't feel like plugging stuff. I just want to get to the end of these comments. Um, oh, my God. Where did I? Here we go. Um, the Misfits music is better all year round compared to Sam Hain, but when November comes around set, yeah, November coming fire, dude. Every November 1st, I always leave that as my Facebook status. I got to do it. Firehouse play Firehose played with Sonic Youth. Yo, Jeff, this channel's blowing up. Now you're st <laughs> no, dude. Listen, I'm not compl I am so not complaining though, because like I said, I I want to get to a place with this channel where I can literally do this every day. Like I am trying to figure out several things now about how to like like do more content on this channel. As some of you know already, I'm doing a long form semi-scripted Screamin' Jay Hawkins video that's going to be coming out. Um, I, and again, I'm just going to put it out there and it probably is going to get, you know, only a couple of hits compared to, you know, the streams, which have been doing very well. But I just, it's stuff that interests me and I want to make sure that I'm doing stuff that interests me as well as do the stuff that I, that brings me any kind of audience that I have. But yeah, dude, I'm just like, the gears are turning. I'm even listening, I'm listening to podcasts with the Punk Rock MBA, just trying to like figure out how to be a better YouTuber, how to do this better. You know what I mean? Um, uh, I don't know if he has the pen light, but who needs the pen light when you have the tattoo? Don't have a heart on for debating you, a heart on. <laughs> this is directed to that other, that other guy, the guy who called me a simp, or whatever. That's, that's what that is. Uh, seems to me good or bad, right or wrong. Jerry suing for the name of the logo and keeping the band going for another 25 years. It did. It did. It most certainly did. And had Jerry not done this, then he probably wouldn't be getting the payday that he now gets by doing the Misfits reunions with Glenn. But opinions and preferences aside, Graves would be a larger piano than Glenn. Maybe in your opinion, said larger piano is also a poor front man who has a poor voice. Those things are subjective. So what, what Joe is saying that he, Joe is saying that Glenn has more, or he's saying that Graves has more range in his voice than Glenn. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what, we don't know how else Glenn can sing. Maybe that's not true. Maybe they could out sing. Oh, I don't know. Who knows? What am I talking about? I don't actually know that. Who, I don't fucking know. I'm literally playing devil's advocate. I'm literally just trying to go against the grain of what Joe is saying because I don't want to agree with him about what he is stating, whether he is. And again, Joe, listen, Joe has spent enough time with Michael and probably seen Michael sing enough that he has some sort of inkling as to why he would consider this to be true, you know? Um, how much of we, we're just going by what we've seen Glenn live do live in his recordings, you know, who knows, who knows if Glenn may, but maybe Glenn's like a closet opera singer. <laughs> uh, and speaking of Joe Pesci, he is also from New Jersey. This is correct. Is it a Doyle? Does he have a Doyle fan club shirt? Someone must have. All right. You know, just cause you guys have stayed on just cause you guys have stayed on this just because freaking um i've been hold on and another oh my god thank you pete pete has left another super sticker tip i gotta pay you more you dude no it's i thank you thank you I, I i'm i'm just gonna be gracious and i'm just gonna say thank you i appreciate the support that's all i'm gonna say and you know what just because 
you guys are so awesome. We're going to take a look at something real quick. I'm going to share something secret with you guys. Just because. Hold on one second. Give me a second to get this together. Let's see what our buddy here is saying. I made one comment where the conversation went in that direction. Because I think Graves is a better singer, everyone with their rose-tinted glasses on get mad. Hey, these are Ray-Ban-tinted glasses, my friend. These are Ray-Ban-tinted glasses. Um, all right, I'm going to share with you guys some something that you've never seen before that maybe nobody has ever seen before because I think tonight is the night to do it. I'm going to do it because I think I think it would be nice to do. Oh, there you go. Robbie actually has one of those shirts. Glenn said that Misfits could not do the intro into the mis. Oh, thank you for explaining that. Yeah, 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 yeah. W was that from an interview? Where you know what's funny? Now that you say that, it sounds very familiar. I I have no idea where it came from, but you're totally right. What interview was that from? No, I just realized. 50 dude i'm so sorry i go as fast as i can no one knows how to have a conversation here it's so disheartening i don't know what to tell you dog i don't know what to tell you oh dagger love also sent a tip but it's way further down he says he feels left out hold on we'll get to it it's coming dagger love thank you but it's a fact. Da I mean, Dagger Love, you've supported so much on this channel too. Like, I, I tip my hat to you, truly. Um, but it's a fact that he is more capable singer or a larger piano than Glenn. Does not make him a better front man, or that he even has a better. Vo so, so then, what is a bit? So then, what is a a, a larger, oh, a more capable singer? A, that he's a more capable. So, what does that mean then? That like this is. This is not, um, it's losing its meaning. The description loses its meaning to me when you say that, Joe. Hold on, guys, I got to find this picture for you. Oh, what did I say that for? Since we're discussing these things. <clears throat> Hold on one second. My voice is going. My voice is going. It's from doing all these shows. I did four shows this week. We did another nine or 10 hours, I think. Let's see what these are. Hold on. <laughs> let me find the right one let me find a good one i'm gonna share just one photo and that's it but all right maybe i'll share more than one you don't know what i'm looking at <laughs> i'm never gonna get through the end of these comments hold on all right, so this is pretty cool. I don't know if anybody's ever seen this. I don't know if anybody's ever seen this. So here, this is at some point, this is during the settlement process in, at some point in time where Glenn and uh, Jerry and the rest of the guys are settling what's happening. This is at the law firm, and they're looking over contracts, and they are actually dressed up as the misfits as they are looking over contact contracts. Hold on. There's Mr. Jim and Franche Coma, and in the back right there is Rocky. All three of these people are in my misfits documentary. Isn't that cool? Mr. Jim is in the documentary, Frank Frank is in the documentary, and Rocky is in the documentary. And oh, let me go back here. And that's them looking over the contracts. There. Since you guys were so generous tonight, I figured I would share that with you. Because why not? I don't think people have seen those photos. I could be wrong. Maybe those those might have been in Teenagers from Mars, actually. Maybe they were. But if they were not, there you go. You got to see something cool. Not my photos. Really not, really not mine to share, but I just figured why not? I'll just share, you know, just for a second. It's so deep into the episode to see this stuff at this point. If you're still with me, we have 50 people here and it's two and a half hours in. I think it's only right to share that stuff. 
listen to the episode a bit. A Misfits biopic would be greater, uh, would be the greatest thing ever, dude. Okay, Sean, go to my. It's somewhere on the channel. We did, we we did this for a half hour. We just like went through people who should be there. Hey, Stiff, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate you. I don't know about a larger piano. Are we talking about range in that aspect? Thank you for qualifying. See, we're having a debate. We're having a civil debate about this, okay? I don't know about a larger piano. Are we talking about range in that aspect? Good point. Let's see what it says. That's so hilarious. You're trying to start a fight between two people because I wasn't sure who this Joe guy was addressing his comments to because I seem to be the only person that likes Graves. I assure you that Joe also likes Graves. Joe is a big fan of Graves, okay? Like, this Joe guy is, the he's he played bass in Gotham Road. He's in Gotham Road. He He's from, in Mr. Monster, and he's in, uh, he was in Michael Graves' band for many, many, many years, okay? So if you're a fan of Graves, you most certainly have seen video of him playing with Joe. A song like Ashes, I've never heard Michael hit falsettos like that. And on the low end range, never heard him do anything like Cat People or 13. Boom, Robbie Bloodshed coming in with the shit where, that I could never, ever, I couldn't pull that out of my ass. Good, Well done, Robbie. Point for the dancing side. <laughs> um, because the subject has shifted several times during the duration of the stream and every single comment you made has been, that's what I, that's why I was getting annoyed with your comments, dude, because just kept going back to graves. That's what I'm exactly. Thank you. Ballard. Exactly. Ashes. One, you know, I got to give, is that is ashes is off of uh, uh black acid devil or black as a devil. Danzig's false said it was totally underrated. That shit was so good when he had it. Lots of, lots of it in three or four or ashes is an EP, right? If I'm mistaken, how is shifting when people were debating specific things I was saying? I don't know, dude. So good. It's mine. Really? I got to check this out. First time viewing your video and was pleasantly surprised and enjoying a bit. Oh my God, this. <sighs> Listen, you know what? He is taking the time to have a conversation with us, even if we don't agree with his opinion. I'm not going to, let's not, we don't have to, we don't have to stoop down to his level. We don't have to call him a simp. We don't have to call him a simp. I agree. I think he's awesome too. And he's supported the shit out of me and I appreciate him and respect him. I appreciate and respect Pete and Dagger Love I, and all of you guys, really, truly. But all you guys are the shit. Furthermore, everyone address, you know who you sound like, dude? You honestly sound like Michael Graves. Are you Michael Graves, truly? Because this is how Michael Graves talks. Like, I'm not kidding. Like, this is Michael Graves. Like, everything is about him, focused on him, super self-absorbed dude. That's one thing I can say about Graves. He's a very self-absorbed human being. That's true. Um, so, I don't know. I don't know, dude. I don't know what to tell you. Does Nerdwar read out? <laughs> Wait, what? No, he does not. I can't wait to watch this. I might have to save that for an episode and just do an episode on that because that would be that's pretty funny. Most of Ozzy's melodies were usually just mirroring the guitar riff. Love Ozzy not hating. Also, a good fun with asbestos. That is a very good rebuttal to what we were discussing. That is true. Ozzy, who doesn't, or at least at the time, didn't play guitar, isn't doesn't really have much musical training. Uh, did kind of go along to the guitar riff. That is true. I, I, I Yes. Speaking of live dancing recording, Sestina's live on threat. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. 100%. 100%. That is from 92, uh, Irving, Irvine Meadows. Uh, and it's never been released. It's in possession of, of Rick Rubin. And it's never been released. And I wish it would come out. I played in a band with Graves for 16 years. That said, when American Psycho first came out, I hated it. It took years for me to enjoy it. No less, as I will say, that Glenn's the better frontman for the Misfits. So there you go. From, from, the, from the guy who was in a band with Graves for 16 years saying that. Everybody hated it at first. I'm new to their show. But welcome, Jay Johnson. Reminds me of the Misfits Bible. Yeah, dude. Misfits Bible. That's what this is. This is... 
This is literally like the live version of the Misfits Bible. Maybe we should rebrand it as the Misfits Bible. If, if I can get Mark Kennedy's blessing, I would do that 100%. Ace, thank you for, or is, it, is your name Ace or Jay Johnson? Thank you for subscribing. I appreciate it. Graves has skill. Yeah, no, I agree. No doubt that, but, but like, you know, it doesn't, you can't, it, Danzig is misfits, dude. Danzig is misfits. It is. It just, it is. I know that's not what, and I know that's not what you're saying. You're agreeing that Danzig has skill, no doubt. Stop. Big Roo. Big Ragu. You aren't allowed to talk positively about him or everyone will be in their app. Will be the bad guy. What about Graves? Listen, and anybody who's a regular on the show will attest that even if I make fun of Graves, even if I'm critical of Graves, I always follow it up with the fact that I like American Psycho and Famous Monsters, and that I like some of those songs. I always say that. I've always said it. I've said that even before I started to have problems that I have with Graves after he made comments or whatever, not to get into any of that. Really don't want to open up that can of worms. Why do we have to keep talking about Graves? Why can't we just let it go? We should do a free-for-all once a week. Should Do you think, should we? I'll do it. I'll do it. But I have, you know what my problem with that is? Not my problem. Here's the one issue. Is it going to just evolve into Danzig as Graves every time? Because if it is, what's the point? You know what I'm saying? If Jerry hadn't done it, you would have gotten bigger. <laughs> yeah, dude. His scatting is him tuning his keys. Thank you. We finally got to the comment. Dagger Love also contributing to the uh the the the, the what what do you want to call it? The 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 funds, the funds, the support. Thank you for supporting the cause. Thank you, sir. I tip my hat to you. Um here's some positive energy. Saturday night, Forbidden Zone, Total Open to Tuesday, Bruise, Bruiser, Best of Me, Vagabond, et cetera, are all fired. There you go. So there you go. People are celebrating Graves for this guy, this one guy who is upset that people are critical of Graves. Singer, vocalist, whatever. There's technically nothing Glenn can sing Graves cannot. Graves has a larger vocal range than Glenn. Doesn't mean Graves can sing Heart of the Heart of the Wolf, you mean Heart of the Devil, as badass as Glenn. Okay, so you're saying that he has a larger vocal range. I can't speak to that. Like, I don't know about these sorts of things. That could be true. I don't think he's a better singer than Danzig. I like Danzig singing better. Boy, is there any other way to watch your flick Romeo's Distress other than Vimeo? You know, Rue, first of all, thank you for bringing that up. I did make a feature-length film. It's called Romeo's Distress. It's currently only available on Vimeo. It was on Amazon Prime, streaming for free on Amazon Prime until Amazon uh, fucked up. You know what's funny? All the music people like get upset like about Spotify and Spotify ripping them off. Us film guys, we had the same problem with Amazon Prime. But again, we're like, it's a necessary evil. You have to be on Amazon Prime if you want to get your stuff out there to people. You know, they pay really crappy, but you know, you can have your stuff on this very official platform. Well, they took all of our stuff down. Like all the indie horror stuff came tumbling down. It's not available anymore. I am debating right now, and I know this sounds really crazy. I am actually debating. First of all, I have a bunch of my original films, my short films uploaded. They're going to be dropping on YouTube no matter what. I am seriously debating putting Romeo's Distress for free on YouTube, uh, monetized with ads. I don't know if I'm going to do it, but I'm considering it greatly for a lot of reasons. Yes, it was from an intro. No, Rue, I will, um, I'll send you a screener copy if you want to watch it. Yes, it was from an interview regarding Mr. Mr. Waltz calling. Huh. Interesting. Uh, what interview was that? Because, you know, it's funny. when you, As soon as you said it, uh, it, it kind of jogged my memory a bit. Because we've been talking a lot about, um, we've been talking a lot about um, Mephisto Waltz as of late. Glenn is fantastic and very accomplished vocalist. He just has less vocal range. Okay, I get it. Yes, yes, I understand. I understand. Graves could hit all the note. Could hit all the notes in Heart of the Devil. 
And Sean disagrees with them that no, no, he could not. My wife and I checked on Amazon. Yeah, it's not available anymore, unfortunately. I'm, it sucks. And it really breaks my heart. If you live in Canada, if you live in Australia, if you live in New Zealand, if you live in any uh, Spanish or Latin territory, you can watch Romeo's Distress on Amazon Prime still. If you have Screenbox, you can watch Amaz you can watch Romeo's Distress or you can watch it on Vimeo. It's the only places where it's available currently. But Rue, we'll talk. We'll talk. I'd love for you to see. If you're interested in watching my film, I'd love for you to see it. Like you would know better than that guy. I don't know what you're referring to. You are kidding. <laughs> Isn't it great? Isn't that rich, though? Glenn's vocal range is much more impressive. A natural baritone crooner that can also pull off high register. Yeah, dude. That is Mr. Jim. Oh, people are just getting to that. You know what? That's my way of saying thank you. That's my way of saying thank you. Holy shit, right? Um, can anyone give a genuine, non-argumentative -arg answer as to why Glenn can get ego stroked by everyone, but if someone speaks positively about Graves, everyone goes on attack? Okay. First of all, it's not about egos being stroked. I like Glenn Danzig, dude. I like Glenn. I like Glenn. I like his songs. I like his band. I I don't hate Graves. I just think Graves, you know, Graves got a really great break. He came in as a as a front man for a, a band that suffered from brand confusion and did his thing, and that's it. Like, what is like what 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 is so hard to understand? Danzig is the misfits, dude. That's why we talk about Danzig. That's it. It's it's really simple. But it sounds super dumb singing Heart of the Devil, too. Glenn had a very cool and unique voice that is different to replace accurately. Yeah. Yeah. Range isn't the only measurement of good vocalists. Proper use of diaphragm, 100%. All of which Graves has. Yes, I agree with you. Graves definitely has all of those things. And I've heard him demonstrate it acoustically and electrically. Graves being a piano is giving me a James from Metallica. <laughs> yes, I was simply, I was simplifying the vocal range and capability to Jeff via metaphor to this because I, I appreciate that, Joe. Because again, guys, as I say over and over again, not a, not a musician. So therefore, the metaphor allows me to better connect with what is being said. And now I, kind of really see what he's talking about. It's like having a short amount of keys versus having a long amount of keys, which shows the, the range musically. And he's saying that Graves' keyboard is bigger than Danzig's keyboard, but it doesn't mean that Danzig can't play the shit of that keyboard better than Graves can with his larger keyboard, which one, one doesn't have anything to do with the other. <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's Lulu, right? Metallica's Lulu. I am the table. I see Dagger. That's what I think. I think that he is Graves. And, or he's going to report to Graves that we were talking shit about Graves. I don't know. <laughs> I made a comment, expressed. I'll tell you one thing. For someone who loves Graves so much, you sound an awful lot. Like, this is like how Graves is. From what I've seen about, like, just thinking that, like, he's a victim and that, like, Everybody's attacking him. No one's attacking you, dude. No one's attacking you. I just disagree with you. That's all. Like, literally it. I didn't say leave. I didn't say get the F out of here. I, as a matter of fact, I thanked you for being here and said thank you for contributing to the conversation. I, I just like, it's like you want to have a debate. You want to make this a debate. You're right, Robbie. Good point. I can't say I've ever heard Graves sing falsetto myself. To be honest, definitely not on a record. So there you go. I reply, but I'm the bad guy. Dude, you're not a bad guy. Relax. You're the one, you're the one calling people simps, guy. They went to the <laughs> I know. It's so wonderful, though. It's so wonderful. It's so wonderful. Listen. Listen, I could just not highlight any of your comments. I could be like Graves and mute your mic and just not highlight any of your comments, but I'm acknowledging you. I'm talking to you. 
And I have not really, I don't think, maybe I could be wrong. I don't think I've insulted you once. I've said, I don't like, I don't like some of your stuff is a little annoying, but I never insulted you. You're the only person who's doing the insulting is you, my friend, my fiend. Um, Izzy plays piano and harmonica. Well, Oh, Ozzy. I didn't know that. I thought Ozzy only played um, or was only a singer. I did not know that he also played piano. Not to the same degree or power. Take Static Age outtakes and listen to Glenn casually killing it on different takes. Refer to Blood and Tears. Yeah, baby. Blood and Tears. Oh. The acoustic set, too. Glenn never sang falsettos unless that's him on Return of the Fly. It is... Uh, I it's it is him. It's all of them doing that on return flight. That's all of them together. Sorry, that was really bad. Brings an interesting point. Graves would be an awful replacement for Glenn in Danzig. It would be laughable. Now there we go. <laughs> Holy shit! Did we just bust this conversation wide the fuck open at two hours and thirty nine minutes with forty two people in the conversation? Could you imagine? Michael Graves replacing Danzig in a band called in Danzig. There you go. There you go. There's that whole argument right then and there. Foo yeah, right then and there. There you go. Replace Glenn Danzig. Glenn Danzig leaves Danzig, right? Then Tommy Victor and Steve Zing sue Glenn, bring Danzig back. And then hire Michael Graves to be the singer of Danzig. And you get, you know, Mother, tell your children not to walk my way. Tell the children not to hear my word. The one to me, what to say. Mother, Mother. Imagine him trying to sing Mother. Mother, Mother. Could you imagine Michael Graves trying to sing Mother? Like, how would that sound? Imagine Michael Graves trying to sing Long Way Back from Hell. Imagine Michael Graves trying to sing Snakes of Christ. Oh, he wouldn't touch that one with a 10-foot pole. Imagine Michael Graves trying to do Godless. Imagine Michael Graves trying to do The Hunter. Imagine Michael Graves trying to do Am I Demon. I don't think it would work. Although Michael Graves did cover Danzig songs with uh, Frankie Cheese, a.k.a. Uh, Chibo Jones, when they were in high school for a talent show. Glenn sang falsettos on Ashes 5. My man. I like it when Robbie says my man. Anyone curious if Glenn didn't go with Ruben and kept playing more punk related music? Any thoughts? I was dumbfounded when I heard Danzig Guan after being such a huge fan of his previous work. Anyone curious if Glenn didn't go with Ruben and kept playing more? Yeah, of course. You mean if he like had released Sam Hain Grimm, it would have been it would have been fascinating. I, I constantly, I constantly try to imagine what it would sound like, and it captures my imagination. I have things to say, but I'm tired of replying to people and being made the bad guy. You're not a bad guy, dude. No one's calling you the bad guy. You're making. You're, you're just feeling sorry for yourself. Like, just just let it go, dude. Just join us in the... Dude, we're just having a conversation. Just, like, relax. It's all good, bro. You're still here. You're still talking with us. No one censored you. Just relax. It's all good. Falsettos, just using your head voice, not chest hitting the higher register. Mark Kennedy, yeah, a Misfits Bible tie-in would be rad. Keep up the great work, Ace. First of all, thank you for the support. I truly appreciate it. We have a newcomer, new subscriber with new support. Mark Kennedy is in my documentary, They Came From Lodi, which is what, not this show, but in general, the shows, the Misfits-related shows that I do are all about. And um, you'll see Mark Kennedy's interview. He has some very insightful things to say. Um, I still remember little sound bites as I go through my, my, my clips. Is this dude... I am even watching the same episode as the rest of us. I've been defending Graves' abilities the entire time. I was at Graves' wedding, and I'm not remotely offended by <laughs> He is, Joe. He is. Real quick, since 
you guys are all still here. Here's another secret. Let me see if I can find it. It's a tiny little clip. I did this one. Well, for those of you who didn't see this one, this is this is from my Bobby Steele interview recently. If it'll play. Traveling back in time. Let's do that again. Traveling back in time. <laughs> and then this is, hold on, I'm going to do one more. I think I'm, am I freezing here? No. Let's do one more. Sorry, my, my screen is, my screen, my screen. Here, let's try one more. This is Bobby Steele from another interview Hold on, that I did showing the, the deep cuts here. Hold on, let me see if I can find it. Yeah, here it is, ready? And that explains that too. Okay, great. We're, we're riding up and cooking with heat. Cool. How, was London, how was London Dungeon born? Oh man, okay, let me just take a drink for this one. Yeah, go ahead. How you doing, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Everything okay for you? Okay. I'm gonna get the oh, sure. <laughs> Gatorade. Endorsed by Bobby Steele. Yeah. <laughs> Steelerade. Steelerade. That was, that's from 11 years ago. And no one has seen the full interview yet. It's going to be great. People are going to like this stuff, I think, eventually. You're going to like it. Are we nearing the end of the comments? Just keep rolling in. No hate, brother. It's been entertaining and no vortex. I have pondered that alternative timeline, but often, but Ruben's production was so damn clean and sharp. It is. And all you got to do is just listen to Final Descent and you listen to the back half of that when they reissued it. And you can hear that connective tissue. You can kind of hear what Sam Hain Grimm would have been. And you can also hear what Danzig was before Ruben polished everything up. I mostly agree with you. And I've been saying that the whole time. Bob Street. Not that there's much video of Danzig with the Misfits, but there's a ton of video of Danzig with the Misfits. Glenn was so much more energetic and exciting to watch. Just compare the two on video. Graves does a lot of standing around looking tired. This is Graves all the time. Just all the time. Like, you know, he's like dancing all of a sudden and he's doing like this chicken with thing. And then later... I've seen this, and I think Loki explained this to me, that, like, you know, instead of, like, really jumping around, because the one thing that Graves does do that's really cool, and he doesn't do it anymore, Joe probably could speak to this, he does this weird split, like, he jumps up in the air and does this, like, split, like, you know, uh, you know, kicks his, both of his legs out. It's pretty cool. I've seen some photos of that. I think that's a cool move. He doesn't do that stuff anymore, though. This is Graves when he, he's just, like, He's like, he, it's like he's doing his thing. Like, you know what I'm doing? He's doing this weird, this weird sort of shuffle dance thing that just, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I don't know what it's about. Uh, I guess it has to do with conserving because Graves does so many shows or he did before, you know, he doesn't do that anymore, but he did so many shows that he had to conserve his energy. And, you know, I mean, dudes in his forties, it's, it's an endurance trial. It's an endurance trial. There's an interview with Bobby Steele where he states that the worst victim of the 95 Misfits era was Glenn. <laughs> he's, I don't know if he's right. I mean, I don't know if he's wrong. <clears throat> Ian Nelson, I used to be a big Danzig fan up to four, started losing me when he went into the more industrial and then the new metal original Danzig band was great though. If it's so simple, how do you fail to understand every single question and point raised? I never said anything other than Graves being a better singer and then reply. Okay, you said Graves is a better singer. I'm saying that Graves is not a better singer. It's That's it. That's the end of it. And you could say, no, I disagree with you. And I could say, I disagree with you. And that's it, dude. Let it go. That's it. I prefer Misfits and Sam Hain as well. Ruben hated the reverb in those early recordings, but to me, it sounded like it was recorded in a catacomb tomb. Hmm. Huh. 
I can assure I'm not him nor my reporting to him. Well, that's good to know. But we might have to take, make you take a Danzig test to find out the truth. If we put Danzig to your skin and you burn and recoil at the hot flame of Danzig, then we'll know the truth. We'll know who you really are. I love how people call Graves fans Graves diggers. <laughs> it's really funny. Um, Ruben is a huge ACDC fan, and you can tell because of the dry production. Hmm. You literally said I'm self-absorbed victim mentality. You've done exactly that. I'll lay it out again. The topic came out. All right, dude. All right. You know what? You're right. We all lost our minds. All 44 of us were. There was upwards of 60 at the time. All of us lost our minds. Yes, yes. He could sing Heart of the Devil. I'm not saying it sound good or nearly as cool. I'm not quite sure anyone could make that song sound as cool. Though. Yeah, that's true. Danzig without Danzig would be almost as good as Black. <laughs> oh, my God. They did return in the very first shows, didn't they? I have an old video bootleg from Florida. I think they're doing weird choices. Like Theme for a Jackal. Yeah, they're doing really weird stuff. They're playing in the doorway and Theme for a Jackal, and they're just doing it really weird. Yes, you're talking about like the 95 Misfits, right? Yeah. We all know Graves is an amateur poser. He could never be what Glenn is, self-made. Graves had vocal coaches, and he's a bratty, spoiled, washed-up child actor star. Was Graves? Wait a minute. What, oh, are you just saying that because he started so young in The Misfits, or did he actually have some sort of acting career that we didn't know about? Imagine Michael Graves taking singing classes. <laughs> <laughs> Graves singing Pony Girl. I reply, everyone acts like I'm some asshole and insists on keeping things going, doing and saying all the things I'm not doing, when all I've done after a certain point. You know what, man? I have an idea. Why don't you go start your own show? You can do it. It's on YouTube. It's a free country. Go start your own show and talk about graves. And people that want to talk about graves with you will go and do it. And you can have a great time. Go. Go with God, my son. Go. It's okay. Interesting. Um, yeah, I don't think I've ever heard Graves sing a falsetto. There's a recording of Graves singing Earth AD. It's so horrible. Raphael, if you could find it, put it in the group or put it here, please. Raphael is very good at digging up interesting Misfits content. So let's see if he can come up with it. All right. Yo, all right, I want to just highlight something super quick. We have gone so off the rails here. It's like 12.30 at midnight. I really, I was supposed to watch, I wanted to, you know, unwind watching a movie, but I can't do that, you guys. Check it out. Somebody took Bob Marley and the Ramones and fused it together to make Bobby Ramone. Holy shit, this thing is insane. Check this out. Check this out. It's on Spotify and it actually mashes up really well. I don't know if they re-recorded the songs or mashed them up. I'm not going to play them here because I don't want to get um, copyright takedown strike. But check this out. Check this out. Look at this. Bobby Ramone. See right here? And then it's called Rocket to Kingston. Durango 65. I don't want to stand up. Stirring in my room. Today, one love. Tomorrow, the world. Jamming affairs. Three little surfing birds. Kea Bop. Glad to see you cry. Is this love kills? And bye bye redemption. And it's really, really well done. Even if you don't like Bob Marley, you will appreciate the way that this gentleman, whoever did this, fused him with the misfits. I highly recommend you all check this out. It's on Spotify right now. Just look for. Bobby Ramone, okay? That's what you're looking for. Thought I would quickly point that out. Funny part is, while Graves had not been in the mis uh, been a Mr. Tam previously to joining the band, he was a Danzig. Right, I said that. He 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 was a Danzig fan and had he had covered them, right, Joe? He covered Danzig with Chibo Jones for the for the uh for the talent, the talent contest. Every time I'm addressed, I'm treated like an idiot, no matter what I say. I'm wrong. I do things others do, like reply, but I'm wrong. I express my... Dude, I just want to give you a big hug, man. I feel like you need a hug. 
and <laughs> oh, holy shit, that is something to imagine. Danzig singing grave songs that I can't wrap my mind around that. No, no, you don't. I listen. I did very well in this video, Pete. We're, we're good. We're good. I appreciate you, dude. I you, you're a sweetheart, and I appreciate you. I really do. I appreciate the the support always. It's great. You know what, Pete? Honestly, I'm considering starting a Patreon. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it that makes sense for what I do. But once I do, I'm going to start a Patreon. It's going to be two bucks a month. That's it. If there's going to be no tiers, you can't do more than two bucks. You can't do less than two bucks. It's going to be two bucks a month. And I'm going to figure out how to make it work that it makes sense for me. And whoever wants to join it can join it. And that that's awesome. That would be cool. That's the best way to do it. So I'm going to figure out how to get the Patreon set up. I've been thinking about it uh, the last couple of weeks, and I've decided that I was doing the Ko-Fi thing, buy a coffee, and I'm thinking really where I want to go with this is a Patreon, but not make the Patreon expensive. It should be nothing more than a dollar or two dollars per month. And I'm going to see how that goes. So don't worry about it, but keep your eyes peeled for the Patreon if you want to support the channel. Ahem, you're the reason why all these groups have a no graves era policies because it creates a tired, never ending and ultimately subjective discussion that quickly becomes a fight. I'm the reason? Wait, oh, you're the, oh, sorry. I thought you were saying ahem. You're addressing the guy's name because it's a yem, a yem, a yem, a yem. Yeah, it's true. So many groups have a no graves era policy. Although in our Lodi group, there's been a lot more graves discussion recently. And while there has been some bashing, I have seen no reason to take it, take it out. Look, everybody's telling you to chill out and you're cool. See, we're, we're not all crazy, man. Maybe you're a little crazy. <laughs> what your girlfriend's like texting you or do you live with your girlfriend or like, it's just like, honey, what are you doing? It's like one o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Does Bobby have footage from the skulls video? I don't, I'll tell you something, Bobby, in that interview that I just showed you, Bobby admits to having the Exile Club, his last show, he admits to having that footage, he admits to having a tape, or he at least talks like he is in possession of the ta of a tape of Irvine Plaza 1979 Halloween show, because it was taped, and it's very possible it was in the possession of Bobby Steele. Now, does Bobby have any of this stuff today? No, he does not. A very tragic situation occurred. And Bobby, a lot of Bobby stuff, and I'm not sure what exists or what doesn't, but I know that some undead masters no longer exist. So there's that. Did anyone see Dave Grohl state his love for the misfits? Yeah, right. His daughter, right? His, didn't his daughter say something about that? Uh, D-Man says Glenn, Glenn thinks he's an amazing drummer. I'm sure Glenn is down with Nirvana. I didn't say anything until the topic was, why are you still on it? Just let it go. Just go with the conversation. Is this, are you a newcomer? Have you watched the show before? Is this your first time here? Shame. Most Danzig era boots are waves of noise. That flip side video was great. I remember it sounding like a harsh noise set. You know, Diabolic Bathtub, there's a video here. Let me see if I can find it. I mean, guys, we're, it's it's so late at this point. I don't I don't care. I'm just going to pull this up here. If I had a Jamie, I could say, "Yo, Jamie, pull this up right now." Real quick. Wow! Wow, that thought. You know, I did a good thumbnail tonight. This was a good thumbnail. I was really really happy about that thumbnail. Um, how do I get to my channel? Oh, yeah, like that. Uh, let's see here. So I did a live simulation of the 1979 show, what it would sound like, and it sounds like this. Hold on. Um, let me find it. Misfits live. I tried. This was from 1979. And what I tried to do is I tried to imagine what that live tape that Bobby had would sound like. And so what I did was I did a little thing here. It was super fun. But share audio, but there we go. Um, 
All right, let's see if this should work. Here it is. Oh, you can't hear anything because I gotta hold on. Sorry. Might be. So I took a bunch of photos that I had. And I took some some punk footage of audiences, and I tried to make it look like it all came from the same show, and to try to imagine what it sounded like. And what I did was I pitch shift and cleaned up and sort of played around with where Eagles Dare from Max's Kansas City in 1978, saying that it was 1979, but not really. It says simulation right there. It started like took off like a rock. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> So, yeah, that was just like an attempt to do some sort of like, you know, um, like a rough simulation of, of what it would, you know, sound like. I don't know. thought that was a lot of fun in, in reaction to the, the bootleg thing. Imagine Graves trying to do evil thing. He doesn't have the testosterone levels. I like that. <laughs> do you think it's – is this a Turo? Is this the – is this the the, the silent uh, totem that was between Michael and I? Um, I don't know. My favorite songs off DSC are Girl... I love, love, love. Go back to that episode, Ballad, if you haven't seen it. I reviewed uh, DSC, Danzig Sings Elvis. I liked it so much when I listened to it on YouTube. No, on um, Spotify, I mean, when it came out that I actually bought, I, I had to buy the record. I had no intention of buying the record. I didn't buy Black Laden Crown. I didn't buy Skeletons. And I was so moved. I was so moved by um, by Danzig Sings Elvis that I had to buy it. Hey, look who's joining the party three hours in. Hey, what's up? We talking shit about Graves again? <laughs> Eric, you're the best. You are the best. No, I'm not going to to say anything while this guy is acting the way he is while reading my comments. <laughs> uh, Graves can Graves dance little hour-long shows nonstop. Gotta throw a little jig in there. Should I do it? Should I do? I mean, it's 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 an hour on the hour. So do I do a? How is he? He's just like this. That's what he does every time. Every single time. Every single time. You know. How many Glenn shows have I been? Are you talking about Jay as in Jeff? Me? Personally? If you're referring to me, I'm going to answer it like you're talking to me. 
and maybe you're talking to someone else. I don't know. I've seen Danzig. Okay, I've seen Danzig Legacy twice. I've been to uh, four Danzig regular shows, I think, maybe. And I've seen the Misfits reunion three times. So, so whatever that is, whatever that number is. My last comment, to be fair, Jeff, you set out to make an episode for newcomers and less informed fans. You got exactly what you asked for when met with a 100 Graves or Danzig queries. You know, Joe, you're so right, dude. Do you know my intentions were so pure with when I started this out? I wanted to just, because a lot of people were complaining, not a lot of people, but some people were complaining under a video that recently took off. I had, you know, not, not a lot. It got, you know, 14,000 views uh, in a very short period of time. And one of the complaints I kept seeing was that there was not any context or could you have added, you know, where's, why haven't you discussed graves? Why aren't you haven't discussed all this stuff? And I said, you know what I'm going to do to make this fair? I'm going to do a commentary. I'm going to do it live because I don't have time to do the edit. I'm going to do it live and I'm just going to interject in between to with dates and context as to what we're watching. And it turned into this, but you know what? This was a fun episode. I had a lot of fun. Thank you all for joining me. You know, I mean, I like it. I like the organ sound that mysteriously appears throughout Danzig one still fail to understand the point. It's not being about either of them, but the fact of me, dude, see, look, everybody's telling you to move on and let it go. I, I think I just answered that question, which was like seven, eight, nine, ten, something like that. Clay Aiken could sing Heart of the Devil, so what? <laughs> I'm not going to stay quiet while someone insults me and treats me like an asshole because I expressed an opinion after the topic was brought up. You know what? AM, I'm saying to you right here, I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings, and I'm sorry if I insulted you. You are totally entitled to your opinion. And that's all I have to say. Sorry. Genuinely. Let's put it behind us. Done. Theater kid. Now you. <laughs> But so what you said, as a man in his 30s, his kicks appealed to you. That's part of his shtick, I guess. Sorry, not last comment. Jeff, I'll give you one guess as to what clever creative mind coined the term grave diggers as in the grave diggers. <laughs> Wait, can I guess? Well, you're asking me to guess. I'm going to say it was Mark Allen Stewart. Am I correct? Was it Mark Allen Stewart? Please tell me it was Mark Allen Stewart. Um. Uh, okay, Raphael likes Ballad of the Broken's channel and new vids. Ballad of the Broken, what is your channel? What do you do? I'm curious to know. If you say chess, <laughs> bro, it's that late. It's that late at night that we can start doing chud impressions, right? <laughs> Loki does the. You know what Loki does though? Look, the, the secret to Loki's Chud impressions that he goes, <laughs> he gets the, the shoulders going. <laughs> we should, you know, if Chud wouldn't flag the video, I would show all of you guys all of the, the stuff that we shot for the Garbage Pail Kids video for Chud. I would just stream it all here. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll find the best clips and do a stream and it'll probably get taken down, but we could still have our fun. Maybe it won't get taken down. Maybe I can um, uh, claim fair use for commentary. Should I do that? Is that something that people would want to see if I did that? Um, we're all here because of Glenn, not Michael. Mike can sing and write cool songs, but get real. Patronization. Keep it coming. I got all night. <laughs> he's got all night because you still don't get the coin point cool vids man thank you jesse thank you for the comment and thank you for joining us i appreciate it 
Um, insults again, but he doesn't get why I'm mad. I got all night for you, dumbass. Yes, let it go. He's a hired gun from Graves. If he says he's not, then he's not. Where can I find Dave Grohl? It it was um it it hit all dude. Just just put it in your Google. It'll come up real easy. Uh, you, you'll see it in two seconds. You know, in my opinion, I never understand why people need to have the argument. I notice a lot of Misfits fans are a lot like the Sonic community, lack ability just to appreciate. Yeah. Separate. Oh, oh, sorry. Lack the ability just to appreciate separate entities or nuance and see everything in black and white. You know, mind the drift. Very good point. You're, you're absolutely. You know who's more right than any of us combined? More right than me or uh, uh, AM or whatever his name is or anybody? Mind the drift right here. He is the person that's more right than any of us with this comment. Why should I re reply? Why shouldn't I reply to people addressing me? Okay. Anyone know the reason behind the Misfits using a second backup guitarist for the live reunion shows? Was it just to fill out sound? I'm... Fill out sound. Danzig is not a fan of Doyle's tone, guitar tone. A um, couple other things. Yeah, I think those two things. That's right. Ben, Glenn, he better think about it. Yeah. Okay, looking at those picks, comes clear that Glenn had a nose job. Why is everybody obsessed with Glenn and his nose job, honestly? Like, who cares? Like, who cares? Okay, he got a nose job. Why do we have to talk about it? Like, in honesty, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, calling you out, Raphael, because you're not the only one. I literally, like, all the time in my comments on the YouTube videos, everybody, there's always a comment about Glenn and his nose job. It's like, what's the big deal? Like, so what? So what? I just don't, I don't get it. I just don't get it. I'm having so much fun with you guys. Thank you for an evening of goofs, of goods and gaffs. Goofs and gaffs. Got it. Well, thank you for joining us, AM. Ballad, thank you. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for the support, truly. I just thought, how cool it would have been if Jerry picked up a Rickenbacker bass during the reunion like the old days? I don't know. Only if he plucked it, if he plucked everything. Let's hit the four hour mark. <laughs> I love Eric. You know, you don't comment often, but when you do, it's always good. It's always good. I'm not sure about exact prices, but I know an Ibanez Iceman Doyle had wasn't cheap either. Yeah, it was absolutely, it was absolutely expensive. Still patronizing, huh? Out of all the live streams you've done about unreleased Misfit songs, how is this the most popular episode? You need to revive your experience hearing the Manny tapes. Um, is wait, are you asking out of all the live streams? Out of all the live streams I've done about unreleased Misfit songs, how is this the most popular episode? Like you're saying, this episode right here is the most popular episode. I mean, you might be right. I never checked the views until afterwards, but you want to know how YouTube actually, um, YouTube looks at watch hours. So you want to know what's funny? Even though one of these shows only has a couple hundred views, because the shows are so long, my watch hours are super high. They don't care about views. Views really don't matter at the end of the day. It's all about the watch hours. Um. Okay, peace out, AM. Thank you for joining us. Goodbye. She is all the testosterone he needs, says Joe. <laughs> yeah, InfoWars, he gets his stuff from Alex Jones. By the vial. Wouldn't be surprised if you received a discount by entering a coupon code GRAVES138 at checkout. Um, way older than the Graves era term. Hold on. We hate Chud here too. He's a hell of a drummer. Chud is, yes, we, we hate Chud. I hate Chud. Yes. For a lot of reasons, I don't like Chud at all. And yeah, that's all I got to say about that. Oh, so you're not going to bed because we all hate Chud? <laughs> There's plenty of reasons not to like Chud. Plenty of reasons. And one of them, 
the, the least being the fact that he is kind of a hack. He's a hack. But yeah, Chud sucks. Um, we all know who had the live Mexican City video on video. Bout of the Broken produced some videos of the Misfits. Oh, I did not know that. I'm going to check it out. I will check that out. I didn't know he did that. I guess I think I was bad before. My second one just hit. Uh-oh, he's coming back because we said something bad about Chud. Oh, no. Mike Hideous or Michael Graves? As in Graves the Band Graves? One more guess who coined the term Grave Digger. Oh, so it was Chud. It was Chud. Chud was the one who coined it, I guess. Not a coincidence that the only Graves fan here is a super butt. <laughs> Again, whenever Eric comments, it's always a good comment. It's a great comment. Nice bait. Sometimes I think Chud only took a picture with me because he thought I was a teenage girl. It wouldn't be, oh, somebody said it and not me. Somebody said it and not me. Wait, but Alan, why, why would it matter if you were a teenage girl? I don't understand. Why would it matter? I, I don't. I'm not getting it. I ain't sensitive about shit. All right, I gotta. I gotta look up this. I, I am so curious. Let's let's find out more about this dude, right? Real quick. I'm I'm just curious now. Now you got. Now you you piqued my curiosity, guy. Let's find out about you. I'm just. I just want to know. Let's go to your YouTube channel. Let's see if you have any. What videos you have? Again, like n n no reason other than I'm just you you. you You've uh, you've piqued my curiosity. So let's go to your channel. Let's see if anything gets pulled up. Yep, there you are. 60 subscribers with. And again, I, I am I'm just interested. I want to learn more about you. That's all. That's all. So I just want to see what you're about. Okay. So first of all, if anybody wants to subscribe to AM, you can hit the subscribe button right here. And you are super into Dragon Ball Z. That's cool, though. I, hey, you know what? We may disagree about Graves, but we both love Dragon Ball Z. Dude, I love Dragon Ball Z. I love Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, we aren't Chud fans here. Chud is a piece of garbage. Being in a band with him, that's right. Robbie was in a band with Dr. Chud. He can attest to what a jerk off he is, not to mention that he came, it came out that he is a rapist this year. So AM, he's a great drummer, but do you support the fact that it came out as a rapist? Uh, according to the sentence right here. Who gives a shit about Glenn Danzig's nose jobs? That's what I was saying. I don't know if I can send in links here, but it'd be funny for you to react the audio of Graves trying to sing Earth AD. I can't, Raphael, I'm not going to do it tonight, but I remind me, put it in the group. I'll get to that because it would be really funny. Sorry, man, I'm just a Brazilian fan of your show. And obviously, Glenn's Air, the Misfits, and Danzig's band, I'm into it. But I'm just learning laughing guys. That's okay. Don't have to, dude, do not apologize. And that's awesome. I'm so glad that we have an international crowd here. So let's look at AM's videos real quick. He's really, really into video gameplay okay i haven't seen one thing about michael graves interestingly enough I'm surprised there's not a single graves video in here cat fight i'm not gonna play that though i'm not gonna play any of your videos dude what's your favorite am what is your favorite um dragon ball z saga i like the frieza saga the best i think it's awesome do you have a website let's take a look Twitch, you're a father and you like fighting games, occasionally upload clips and matches from a few different games I play on stream. That's cool, man. I dig that. Let's go to your Twitch for a second and see what we got here. All right. This guy checks out. I don't think he's secretly Michael Graves for sure. Adam, am I going to get in trouble for doing this? All right. I'm going to X that out. I don't know what that is. You have passed the test. You're not, you are not Michael Graves. Um, Jerry should have. Yeah, that would have been cool. That would have been cool. Yo, what's up, Josh? 
I bid super high and then <laughs> Josh, Josh makes stickers. He made me video business media stickers like nine years ago. He did a great job. And he tried to, he did a super high bid on Doyle's guitar and never paid. Are you talking about the, the, the Misfits 95 guitar, Josh? That would be terrible. I wish Glenn was able to release the stuff yet. Yeah, that would be good. Uh, 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 people should take turns on stage. Uh, you know, that's super rude. Can we not use that language? I'm putting you in timeout. I can do that, you know. I could put users in timeout. Hey, AM, you want to know what's funny? You want to know what's funny? In in all seriousness, I just that guy just called me uh, G A Y on this channel. I just put him in timeout. I haven't put you in timeout once. How about that? How about that? What's wrong with Chud? I legitimately know nothing about him other than he's a good drummer. You just heard what's wrong with Chud. Okay, so if you want to support Chud, you're more than free to. But you just heard what's wrong with Chud. The Chud hate. Oh, here's another four hour. There's another four hour podcast. Yeah, AM, go listen to my podcast about Chud if you want to know what's wrong with Chud. It's three hours long. It says a whole lot. Three and a half hours long. Like for real, I'm not even trying to start anything. I legitimately don't know what he said. There's plenty of reasons not to like Chud. Why he said there's plenty of reasons not to like Chud. I've only heard his drumming. Wow, you've you've suddenly gotten super whatever, super like ignorant about the subject. He's gonna rip on the fact that I play fighting games. Did I? Did I rip on the fact that you play fighting games? Not at all. As a matter of fact, I went to your channel to see what you and I, if you and I had anything in common. We both like Dragon Ball Z. So what do you think about that, Mother Effer? I I didn't do what you thought I was gonna do. Second guess you. Second guess you watch, watch what I didn't do any of that. How dare you? How dare you? Egotistical screws everyone on pay. Been stated multiple times that he's raped a mentally disabled girl. He copyrighted your boy Graves songs on Web of Dharma. He bailed on Doyle's tour two days before. Yeah, and he took all the money from the Web of Dharma tour with Graves and he bought himself a hot tub. It's amazing that he was able to copyright that and Graves couldn't release it. It's like kind of insane. Homie sensitive about being called sensitive. <laughs> you never say that to me. Internet tough guy. What? I hear that's what he's into more than once. I have also been around other people who have regaled me with the same stories that Robbie was speaking of, as well as, and I'm not going to name her name here. She came out with her own statement and she made it public after Alex Story made a statement and confirmed that Chud was taking pictures of uh, trying to take pictures up her pants. She's 16 years old. Chud's 46 in 2012. But what has he done? I just said what he did. <laughs> Wait, but I didn't know that. Can anyone source any of those claims if they were legitimate? I've only heard chum. God, not, see now you're now you're now you're really annoying. Like this is annoying. This is annoying. Truly annoying. There when the the claims are legitimate claims, and it came out last year that publicly for the first time it's it's a a big it was a big fat open secret for years apparently so hands down i don't even want to talk to you about dragon ball z anymore silly goose hey josh see this guy right here was blocked for five minutes and he's trying to comment again and he can't Maybe Jeff won't say you're an ass, but I will. I slept in a <laughs> I slept in a bed with Graves before. I own his personal copy of the Dig Up Her Bones seven inch cut his hair. I'm Joe Vasta on Facebook. Hit me up. I'll call you names. Oh, oh, you know what Joe didn't say, but I'm gonna say it right now. I got your pizza ready. <laughs> oh shit.
It was one of those handmade annihilator. Guitar- right, right, right. It was just after he left the bank, he was trying to make money. He, he was trying to sell it for like ten thousand dollars, right? He kept messaging you, asking you to pay, and you just ignored. That's hilarious, right? Stakers, you need to play some more pachinko, my friend. Mike Kidis was not kind to Chud in his book. Yet, yeah, no, he was not. Or Jerry and Doyle, for that matter, sounds like he was miserable in that band. Um, he told a story, you know, Ch- uh, Mike Hideous, Bob, Mike Hideous was on my show, Pizza Punk, as I stated earlier in the stream. Um, he told a story about um, Dr. Chud stole a uh, animal bestiality uh, videotape that was given to Mike as a goof, as a joke. Chud was trying to watch it and then stole it and put it in his bag, took it from, from Mike Hideous to watch it for whatever reason that Chud wanted to watch it. Chud, Chud is, I guess, into bestiality. Graves dancing is one Graves dancing is one thing, but Misfits 95 or not, that guitar of Doyle's is way better than the Iceman. I don't care. I'll fight you in real life. Ray Vaughn's actually selling his Danzig era bass. Wow, really? I generally do not know about him. I'm looking to... I don't look into per okay, cool, dude. This guy's trying to pick. Yeah, no, I'm done. I'm I'm not I'm really not mad. If I was mad, I would just like you know try to like time him out like that other guy. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'd buy a Casio Erie did on his first album if he wants to auction that. You'd never do that to my face, and that's what's really funny. Okay. It's Great that after I let things go, you flip and decide to antagonize me again. Dude, I really don't want to antagonize. Dude, we both like Dragon Ball Z. Remember? I just told you how I like Dragon Ball Z. As a matter of fact, I'm re-watching Dragon Ball right now with my son, and it's a real task. Like, when I was younger, it was much easier to watch Dragon Ball Z. The show moves at such an incredibly slow pace that it's harder to watch now. Tell us about all the tough guy stuff, bro. Read us your thug resume, please. I was learnt Doyle's. I was lent Doyle's Iceman for about a year. I used to rock around my house playing Misfit songs in my boxes regularly. I got to use it on stage a few times too. Truth be told, it's an awful guitar. Interesting. I don't need to. If that was addressed to me, Eric, I have secrets. Peter, what are your secrets? That's because I honestly, to God, didn't know that Chud was possibly a rapist, which of course I would never support. You're saying you keep talking, saying like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spill the beans. Spill the beans. Spill the beans. Guys, I've caught up with the comments, which means that we got to end the show. We've reached three hours and 30 minutes. How did this happen? How did this happen? How did the show go so fucking long? Seriously. But spill the beans. Spill the beans. Spill them. Legit didn't know that is, how is that bad? Legit didn't know how is that bad? What? I saw your show with Mike Hideous. It was a great interview. Right. So he talked about, he talked about Chud and the bestiality tape in that interview. You better chill out of my suit. <laughs> 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 Why is this fellow so mad? Dude, this was a great show. I'm going to end it at three minutes and 30, sorry, three hours and 30 minutes. This show is ending. So get it out. Pete, what is the, spill the beans, Pete. Spill the beans. Spill the beans. Spill the beans. Spill. Do you know this is, do you know what the longest show that I've done on this channel? Um, Joe Vasta. I ain't mad. People just want to be play behind safety of their computer screens. Yeah. Lumen Vader, if you own a bestiality tape as a goof, that's really sus. Well, Mike Hideous was given, it was a joke. They didn't, Mike Hideous didn't own the tape. Chud stole the tape that was given to Mike Hideous as a joke. That's all. Colt, thank you for joining us. Listen, if you've been here this whole time and if you enjoy this nonsense that we've been doing, please like, share, and subscribe. Please subscribe to this channel. Uh, I want to thank everybody who supported the show tonight. It was wonderful. Um, 
If you want to learn more about Chud, go watch the Chud episode on this channel. If you want to learn more about Graves and my interactions with Graves, go watch watch on this channel. Oh no. No. <laughs> Oh my God. Don't make me do this. Dagger, I can't. I can't. I got to go, bro. I got to wake up early for my kids. Dagger, I got kids. I got to wake up and I got to give them breakfast and shit. I can't do it, man. I can't. I got to go. Hey, Rue, thank you so much. Dagger, I'm sorry. I can't do it. But he, AM unsubbed me. He unsubbed me. You already watched. Thanks for watching, bro. I appreciated that. Appreciate it. That brought me here to fuck with. Oh, so he was. This was revenge. You tried to get revenge. <laughs> I'm your dad. What? <laughs> Guys, this is our new insight. AM is our new inside joke from now on. Like whenever we're on the show now, we have to just go AM. Like that's just going to be like a thing. He unsolved. I might watch the Chud one just to see what there is to say because I really did not know that he was about that. You know what the th thing is, AM? I think you're still here despite everything that's been said and despite all this stuff. I think you're still here because you genuinely enjoy the attention that we give you. And it makes you feel good in some way. And if that does make you feel good in some way, then I'm truly happy. And I'm truly happy that you feel some attention even if you unsub for me and i'm gonna give you a big computer hug am 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 it's pronounced a m the letters so why the hell didn't you just write a dot m like a m why didn't you just do a m like this you literally could have just done this dude dude why not this look it's so simple AM. Why didn't you just do AM? You could literally make your YouTube handle. It would be super clever if you did AM just like the letters. Like, imagine if this was your screen name. That would be a lot cooler than what you have, I think. And, and this is just feedback. This is just feedback. I'm, I'm not saying you have to change it. I'm just saying it's hard to pronounce. Like, this could have been your thing. Look. Like, that could have been it. That's just too plain, Jane, boring. It's too plain? What? Dude, this makes so much more sense. How is that? AM, just like the letters. I like that so much more than AM. I get what you're going for. It's supposed to be like, AM, what's up? It doesn't work, dude. It doesn't work. I'm really sorry that you unsubbed from my channel. I read Mike's book years ago and it stuck with me. It was a great to uh, see him talk about it on your show. Now I need to see yes, Bob, go to the Dr. Chud show. If you thought this one was long, well, the other one was just as long, which was three and a half hours. Guys, should we look at the Dr. Chud uh, rushes and watch them? That would be kind of funny. That would be a good show. I think ma'am may actually be stamp. Shut up. Not the Stanley Wolfgang. I know who Stanley Wolfgang. Wait, Raphael, why do you think it's Stanley Wolfgang? Stanley Wolfgang. <laughs> the misfits fiend himself. He's famous. Just call me PM. Yeah, baby. PM. Because it's my prison handle made from my initials, if you had to know. So are you trying to tell us that you went to prison? Is that what? Yes, Chud. Spelt that way to be cooler. A G S. <laughs> oh my God! Raphael thinks that it's Stanley Wolfgang has returned. Do you know who Stanley Wolfgang is? The okay, you know Aaron, the guy who does the Fiend Crypt, Crypt, the original Misfits Fiend Crypt. 
that like archives everything, Aaron Krieger or whatever his name is, his arch nemesis was Stanley Wolfgang. And they were in this like eternal battle. It was so funny. What's your longest show so far? It For the whole channel, it was five hours and 12 minutes long, unbroken. Uh, broken up, sorry, broken up, it was five hours and 12 minutes. Unbroken, it was five hours and eight minutes. Those are the longest. So this is actually not the longest that we've done. So I have to share an awkward Chud interview from Scarefest. Dude was, I've seen, Xander, I've seen this interview and that's what I talk about. Remember when I was talking about how like Chud doesn't do interviews because he's just like, he just can't, he's like not a human being. Like he can't answer questions. Arr, arr, oh yeah, bro. Yeah. So I don't know. Stanley. <laughs> I was surprised to hear AM had a kid as would imply that he is at least almost an adult. Then I heard he was a Dragon Ball Z fan. And now I'm back to speculating he's underage or the <laughs> <laughs> Joe, Joe, this is great. This is so great. You know, Joe, I like Dragon Ball Z and I have kids too, Joe. But that was a hilarious comment. You need to come to Philly, Jeff, for real cheese. Dude, I swear, Pete, I swear to God, if I'm ever in Philly, we're getting cheesesteaks. Swear to God. I will, I swear to God, that is going to happen. If I come to Philly, we're going to get cheesesteaks. Going to 100%. I got to put my son in bed. Don't leave yet. I'm having a blast. Dude, it's 1.15 a.m. Where are you? I, I would. I hope you're not on the East Coast. You're going to tell me your son is still up at 1.15 a.m.? I'm not. I am so not judging you as a father in any way, shape, or form. I'm not one to talk. I, you know, I, there's so many things I could do better as a dad. So can't, can't really talk. Stanley, the guy we found picture, uh, pictures of fan. <laughs> yes. He bashed Jerry online, but like took a lot of pictures of him. Yes. A lot of people don't know about Chud's secret rap career on SoundCloud. He cropped the last sound. I can't read anymore. It's on SoundCloud. He tried kicking freestyles back in the day. Are you serious? Is that true? I love the online balls. Chud had sex with a lady who had sex with Gigi a couple of months prior to his death. Dude definitely had has some disease. She was called the cookie lady. <laughs> oh my God. That poor girlfriend of his. I feel so bad for his girlfriend. I really do. You love balls online. What are you trying to say? Is Lodi pizza actually good? It's, you know... I'm going to admit this three hours and 36 minutes with 38 people still watching this feed. I'm not the biggest fan of Lodi pizza. It's okay. Pizza. It's not my favorite pizza amongst misfits fans. It's like a golden elixir pizza. You tell that to any misfits fan, they'll like lose their mind. For me, I'm like a pizza snob, you know, coming from New York. I it's not it's not my favorite kind of pizza if I'm being honest. We're accepting all kinds here. Not awake, he fell asleep in my bed a while. Oh, okay, so you're putting him in his bed. That's good. Good job, Jeff. You're going to make it, brother. I hope so, man. I'm saying given my life experience, I love when people try to talk tough and, and intimidate me behind the protection of their computer screen. Yeah, we got to know more about this cookie lady. I ran into Chud and Mr. Jim at Lodi Pizza with Vasta once. Hold on a second. Chud was hanging out with Mr. Jim at Lodi Pizza. That is hilarious. I want to know the story behind that one. I just want to go and see three hits from hell post. No, um, I think that's in Cardi's Sugar Bowl. Is they have the three hits from hell in Lodi's Pizza too? Lodi's Pizza is okay. The best pizza in Lodi's is TJ's which was the brother of the owner of Lodi's Pizza, but TJ's closed during the COVID forever. You know, I never tried TJ's, but I'm glad that you could admit that, Robbie. I thought you would be the first one to be like, oh, no way, Lodi Pizza's the best. I, I'm glad you. I'm glad you're able to admit that, though. That's good. That's good. That's what I'm saying to AM. No one's trying to fight you. This is the internet. Yeah, it's the internet, dude. Lodi Pizza is right behind Lodi High School. Ate there every day for four years. Learned to love it. Are you, Bob, uh, did you go to... Um, did you go to high school in Lodi? 
Are you, are you from Lodi? What's the title of the Chud episode? Dude, go find it on my chat. Well, maybe if you maybe if you were subscribed, you might find the Chud episode. You know, they find the Chud episode. I'm the leprechaun. My name is A.M. Wait, A.M., can I honestly ask you? And I'm really, I swear to God, I'm not trying to be a dick. I honestly want to know. All right. I don't know if Dagger Love is still here. Dagger, I'm going to go to 138 just for you because it's already 119. We're going to do it. We're going to 138. We're ending at 138 in the morning and we're calling it a night. Um, AM, I want to know one thing. Is uh, What did you go to jail for? It, since you volunteered the knowledge that you went to jail, I'm curious to know what you went to jail for. In all seriousness, I'm not. it's not even a joke. I'm honestly asking. You don't have to tell us if you don't want to. I respect your privacy if you don't want to. I'm kind of curious to know. I'm honestly curious to know. You were the one who volunteered that you went to jail, that this was a prison name that you received. Mr. Jim walked in while we ordered Chud was... Okay, so they weren't together. But that is hilarious that you like that Chud was there and Mr. Jim walked in. That's amazing. That is amazing. I'll reconsider blessing you with my subscription and views if the episode is good. I, dude, I don't care what the fuck you do. I don't care. You can go, you can, you could never watch another episode again. And I would be super happy. Like do whatever the hell you want. If you want to, if you want to learn something about Chud that I learned, then go watch the episode. Up to you. Chud called up Jim to meet a couple of fans from England before a misfit show. Ah, gotcha. Gotcha. I've done a lot of fucked up shit, but I would never put peanut. <laughs> Hold on. I'm screenshotting this one. It's too amazing. Hold on. I, I got to screenshot this. I've done a lot of fucked up shit but I would never put my penis in a place Gigi's had been. That's too good. Rob Lovelies is the best pizza in the area. I've never, okay, noted. Proudly adorning your prison nickname as an online handle not only tells me how tough he must be, but it assures me that he isn't very bright either. It's all coming together now. Hmm. Yes, I grew up in Lodi, graduated Lodi High in 84. That's cool. So you went to school with uh, Zing and Chud and um, Doyle and Erie and Rocky, right? That's awesome. Um, as someone who lives in Hasbrook Heights, no lovelies, but wow. At Eric, see, that's the thing, though. How, have you ever noticed... AM, have you noticed that you have literally made the entire dialogue and conversation about you? It's literally been about you this whole time. Like speaking in I statements, like this has all been about you. It's a matter of disrespect and standing up for yourself as a man. You went to jail for strangulation. So did you murder somebody or you just assaulted them by strangling them? Dude, I'm doing it. I'm just going to go to 138 because it's 122. What's another 16 minutes to say that we can end the show at 138? What kind of Misfits fan? <laughs> oh, wow. You're in Cali. Um, what kind of Misfits fan would I be if I didn't end the show at 138 when I had the opportunity to? Hey, Dagger, have you ever tried Coleones and Heights? Relatively new, pretty damn good. That's uh, pizza, Robbie. I missed that, but talk all that shit, 245. Dude, dude. 245 is 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 a bassist in your favorite singers in your in your favorite singers band bro like you you should love him you should love 245 man it's a few blocks down from lovelies on the same side bob you went to school with my father then my my father graduated in oh so you went to school with bobby blood blood uh, shed as well but i guess you're the type that thinks Guess you're the type that takes one thing about a person, thinks exactly who they are. That's the point of having fun. Thanks, Basement Archives. I'm glad you're loving this show. <laughs> I am 138. That's what time it is. I, by the way, the moment it turns 138, I am ending it. If not even saying goodbye, I'm just going to stop this at 138. 
So for all of you who are with me, 41 people, we're three hours and 43 minutes in. 41 people are still here. Yes, Rue Borg's still here. <laughs> Dagger, that's a different place, actually. It's on Williams Avenue. Cardi's. I've been to Cardi's. Cardi, Cardi Benson, who runs Cardi's Sugar Bowl, went to high school with Jerry Sr., Jerry Only's and Doyle's father. And I interviewed him for the doc. He's in the documentary as well. It wasn't anything extremely serious, but enough to net a felony and get me on probation, which I screwed up from street living and shooting dope. Wow, we I have to say that we have learned so much about AM tonight. It's not even funny. I can't get over how much information we that he has voluntarily told us about his life. Well, I'm glad that I hope everything is better for you now. I am truly. I hope that everything is better. I hope that um, you know, you know, things are good with you and your son. And um yeah, I don't know what else to say to you, dude. We are on 38. <clears throat> it's more fun on the show when Jeff is having fun. <laughs> dude, I'm always having fun. I'm always having fun. I got nothing to hide. All right, what should we... Should we look at another photo since it's so late at night? Let's look at one more photo. One more photo, guys. I'm going to pick a real good one. Real wild one, wild one, wild one. Do, 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 do. Oh, my God. If you could only see what I'm looking at right now. If you could only see what I'm looking at right the fuck now. Holy shit. Ooh. Uh-oh. Let's see here. Let's see. What should I pick? What should I pick? By the way, hi, Rob. Love the album you signed. Nice. Dr. Chud's Final Juggernaut. Why don't you have a seat over here? I'm Chris Hansen, and this is Dateline NBC, and we are doing a show on how to catch predators. Mother ever. Yo, friggin' Neon Knees in New Zealand missed the show. Dude, this was such Neon Knees. This was a show unlike any other. I don't know why, how this show came to be. Like, it started off so innocently as one thing, and it turned into this. And... I just, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I ain't worried about shit, even though I'm 50% sure you're going to try to turn it against you. However, I don't like living like that anymore. I got clean one custody of my son. Life is good. That's awesome, dude. I'm friggin', I'm truly happy. Did I say anything about anything? Nothing. That's, that's great. Truly. Truly. Should I drink more whiskey or no? I don't know, man. I don't know. We got 11 minutes left. I still haven't picked a picture. I want to see the Doyle fan club outtake pics in their sweatpants. Okay. You want to see that? I'll show you that. Dagger. Dagger picked it out. That's what we're going to look at. Okay. Ready? Please go on because I didn't know anything about Chad before tonight. On the reels, though, he's got to be tough as nails. I can only presume one would find themselves in as many fights while arguing with guards and other inmates to put <laughs> Dragon Ball Z on the TV. I can see Chad just saying to Chris, <laughs> bro, bro, bro. Yeah, you Neon, you can do that. They, they do that feature now. Now, nah, the shit you see now is what helped me, like, AM, seriously, one thing for certain. <laughs> Bro, like, 
like like I'm not I'm not joking. Like this, we've literally learned so much about AM tonight. Like this has been like a biography. We've it's been like a biography of AM. Just AM this pure AM this. All right, hold on. I'm picking out a real good one. All right, this is the one photo. <laughs> This photo, I'm only pick, I'm only showing you this one photo, but it, to me, this is this is the best of the best right here. Okay, this photo is the best. This photo is so good. Are you ready? Are you ready, <laughs> dude? This is the funniest, Rob. We will we will remember this episode forever. Yeah, I knew Steve and Erie pretty well. Doyle was on the football team, Lodi Rams. They were all two years older than me. You know, Bob, man, maybe you should freaking come on the Lodi show. I'd love to hear your um, I'd love to hear you talk about that stuff. Would you ever want to talk about your experiences? That would be an interesting episode. Because whenever you think of me, whatever you have to say, whether you like me or hate me, I somewhat made myself the center of attention for a while because I was bored. I mean, honestly, dude, I just think you are, you suffer from like, you're just super self absorbed, like, in all honesty. I know people like to draw their line in the stand, but liking Danzig and Graves is the benefit of getting two different styles depending on what you're moving for. That's a good point, I guess. Why are Mrs. Mr. <laughs> they really are, though. They really, really are. <laughs> Like, even the fact that Dagger was like, Jeff, you can't stop the show, or Jeff, keep the show going until we reach 1.38 a.m. in the morning, because that's a lyric from a Misfit song. That's <laughs> and, there, and there's 43 people watching this. There are 43 people watching this at 1.30 in the morning, three hours and 50 minutes into the fucking show. Like, it's just bonkers. That's why the haters don't get. I come from a different episode of his earlier with the explicit goal of just fucking with the people. I can't. By the way, I made sure to like and sub. If, by the way, make sure to like and sub if you play fighting games. I probably have something to teach you. All right, man, I will. I'll, I'll, I'll sub off the sub to your page. Thanks. Wait, so hold on. So you come on here. You, you have this whole debate thing. You unsubscribe from my channel. And now you want me to sub subscribe to your channel because you think there's something I can learn? Fine, I'll do it. I'm going to subscribe to your channel. There's, wait, what was that? There's probably no other band that has the fandom like that. No, Robbie, there definitely is. Imagine Kiss fans. Kiss fans are, I'm going to show this picture in one second, but I just got to, hold on, the comments are building up again. This is impressive, man. I couldn't imagine having a feud in real life with you to argue over two things. <laughs> PowerPoint presentation. That's right. It would be a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, Ryan, you did catch a lot. Ryan, what are you doing at 1.32 a.m.? We're, we're, we're three minutes and 51 seconds into this thing. But I'm glad you're here, Ryan. By the way, please, if you're just joining us, like, share, and subscribe. Please subscribe to this channel. If there's All the stuff is down below. Sure, I try to get... A noise Beatles cover together with Eerie and D interesting. Oh, you played bass in China with Steve, huh? Dude, I feel convicted. I do not stop. Ravana fans be obsessed over hair and underwear pieces, really. Uh, Jeff, fuck a Patreon. You should start a They Came. I know you're right. I got to do a Jerry only. They came from Lodi, Jerry only fans account. That's what it will be here. Oh, uh, man, I kind of wish I was on the West Coast right now because it's just so late. Dude, Jeff, you still need to check out Acid Witch version of Halloween 2. It's on the Samhain tribute. I will. I will check that out. Didn't someone post that in the group, maybe? It's got me in a lot of... What are you even talking about? But I don't get violent anymore. So I only have a YouTube comment section to scratch that itch. This guy's telling us his life story. Are you sure? <laughs> All right, guys. I'm so, oh my God, can't sleep. What's going on? <laughs> we got, we got some London dungeon in here. Dude, this is so, it's so crazy. 
I'm 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 kind of starting to like him too. Like he's like a total. You know what he is? He's a goober. You guys know what a goober is? Like they're not bad people. They're just goober. He's a goober, dude. He's just a goober. This is the funniest show ever. I, I just I'm so glad that like like I can enjoy this with you guys and that you can appreciate this. Bust out some. Uh, you know, I got to tell you, I have. I have this orange pineapple seltzer. I'm sober, bro. I've been sober for many, many years. Um, I, I do not, I do not drink alcoholic beverages, but I, I fully support other people that do, and I, I, I salute you with my seltzer. So, cheers to you, sir. And I drink. Um, all right, I'm going to show. Uh, we're all loving this. All right, I'm going to show this real quick. Ready? It's 1:34. We're getting ready. Here it is, you guys. <laughs> is that great or is that great? I'm not really like this in real life. That's what I've been saying. I've just been fucking with everyone for my personal entertainment for the... Oh, God! The joke's on us, everybody! The spicy water. Oh, no, dude, it's so not your bad. E Eric, please, not your bad at all. Do not even say that, truly. Yes, it's pineapple seltzer. You know what this is? Do you have Wegman? Ryan, do you have Wegmans where you are? Right here. Was that a good photo? Did I deliver, Dagger? Did I deliver on a good photo? Drank heavily <laughs> this episode. How many was? No, Robbie, it's not going to happen. <laughs> dude. It's amazing. It's truly amazing. Truly, truly, truly amazing. So there you go. There's the photo, everybody. It is. It's my variety hour. It's a great photo, right? Listen, I think I've done pretty well on, you know, keeping everybody entertained. Well, it's not me. We should. I can't take any credit. It should be um, AM should take all the credit. Steve Zing is such a sweetheart. He let my band open up for him. He gave our band a CD copy of June. Yeah, dude, that that is that sounds like a, a grade A one Steve Zing experience, and that's awesome, truly awesome. Um, you can act like that if you really want, but I'm the one that got exactly what I wanted. So who's the fool, really? You know what, dude? I'm totally the fool. I am the fool. She piano demo or static age mix. It's not a demo, is it? It's uh the just the it's just the seven inch version. I think I like the static age version better. Time time to work. Take care. Ryan, thanks for checking in with us and stopping by. We are all pissheads here in the UK. Hey, you know what? We're all pissheads here in America, too. Don't worry, Divine Mothman. What is that pick from? That is from uh, Rocky's personal archive, um, which he gave to me 10 years ago, if you could believe it. Some of them. It's not, not, I don't think I have the full archive, but I, I, and I don't usually bust out the picks. Occasionally on a live stream when it's like super buried in the video, like where, you know, it's not going to be like plastered everywhere. I'll bust out a pick or two. You know, especially when it's like a great, you know, show like this, I'll just do it. Um, but generally I don't because they're not mine. It's not mine to 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 really, you know, show. So technically you could call it a demo, but I prefer it to be a proof of concept. Um, it's not mine. I don't own it. So what jail you bunk at, bro? <laughs> I killed my bot. Oh my god. <laughs> Pete, you're awesome. I need a poster of that in my living room. We all do. We all do. Oh, we are 138. Do, do, we are 138. We reach 138. Do, 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 we are 138. Do, do, we are 138. In the eyes of AM, do you think you're AM clean? AM is really mean. AM is a violent motherfucker. AM will strangle you. 
and he'll punch you in the mouth too. Cause his name is AM and he's got to spell it really cool. Wow! We are AMA. Down, down, we are AMA. Down, it's time to go to sleep. <laughs>